Mm. Right, thank you. Um, I can now officially start this meeting. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, before I start the business of the meeting, I will go to each uh, committee member to confirm that they can hear and be heard. It is a legal requirement for me to do so. If you can, please have your video on so that you can be seen by those in attendance and the public watching. Please advise me at once if at any time during the meeting you experience any technical difficulties that prevent you from hearing or being heard. I remind members of the committee that you will only be able to vote on an application before the committee if you have been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. I will now call on each councillor's name in turn. Please speak to confirm that you are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Good morning, Chairman. I can hear and see you clearly. Good morning, I can also see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews. Good morning, I can see and hear you clearly, Chairman. Thank you, I can also see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Sebastian Bowen. I don't believe he's with us yet. Um, he'll hopefully be joining us shortly. Councillor Tony Fagan. Good morning, Chair, I can see and hear you. Good morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor Foxton. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Councillor James. Uh, good morning. I can hear and see you. Good morning. I can see and hear you. You were just a little bit hesitant there coming over, but hopefully um, the signal will uh, stay. That's more to do with my voice, I think. Then. Right. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Milmore. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Also you. Uh, Councillor Mill. Uh, good morning, Chair. I can also see and hear you. Yes, good morning. I can see and hear you. Councillor Roan. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Selden. Yes, good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Uh, good morning to you. I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Stone. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Wilding. Morning, Chair. Yeah, I can hear and see. Thanks. Morning. And Councillor Bowen, can you... Uh... I can see and hear you, Chairman. Good morning to you. Thank Good morning. you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Right. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's meeting. Uh, the Council is video and audio streaming this meeting live on the Council's YouTube channel and making an official recording. Please remember what you say and do in this meeting has a global reach and your words and actions should be chosen carefully. Please ensure that all mobile devices are switched off to prevent interference with the audio and video system. Members are reminded that speeches are limited to uh, three minutes. Right, we now go into the agenda proper. So um, first item on the agenda, apologies for absence. Uh, we've received apologies from uh, Councillor Graham Andrews and Councillor Graham Jones. Uh, name substitutes uh, for Councillor Graham Andrews, we have Councillor Bowen, and we have no substitute for um, Councillor Joan. Item three, declarations of interest. Is there anybody um, that uh, needs to... Um, Chair, Fagan, um, Councillor Fagan, please. Yeah, um, Chair, I'm a member of the Herefordshire Wildlife Trust, and I believe that as a that's a, a declared interest that I'm not able to vote or be in the meeting. Okay, thank you. And I see we got the thumbs up from uh, Mr. Bishop. I apologise. I've, I've uh, missed out. Uh, Mr. Bishop, introducing officers that will be uh, conducting the meeting this this morning. 
Mr. Bishop, you're on mute. Thank you, Chairman Members. Um, so we've got three applications before you this morning. Item number six, land at, to the west of Ashdown House Marden. O Ollie Jones will present that one. Item number seven, land to the at Whitegate Farm Litmarsh, Alistair Wager. And item number nine, the, the buildings at Tritordi Nature Reserve, Land Grove. Elsie Morgan will present those. Also in attendance, Chairman, we have the legal re re representative for the committee, Dawn Evans. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, and apologies for missing that item. Uh, we now move to uh, item four minutes of the last meeting. Uh, Chair, I think Councillor Swinglehurst is, is just trying to um, put her hand up. Okay, uh, Councillor Swinglehurst. Uh, th thank you, Chairman. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm also a member of the Heritage Wildlife Trust, although I'm only speaking as a local ward member on agenda item eight, but just for, for thoroughness. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, any other declarations of interest? I see none. Right, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, we've um, had no matters of accuracy uh, being notified to the monitoring officer. Um, so I'd like to ask Democratic Services whether the electronic voting system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible voting committee members for this poll. Uh, yes, Chairman, we have 14 voting members and they may cast their vote now. Okay. Right, you'll see on the screen four against or abstain. If you weren't at the meeting, you just abstain and press the blue submit button at the bottom. All votes are in, Chair, and those have been unanimously accepted. Okay, thank you. We now move on to uh, item five, Chairman's announcements. Um, nothing to report except for thanking members for attending the site visits on Monday. We were very fortunate to have a sunny day. Um, good job it wasn't uh, Sunday or today. Um, and I'd just like to make an apology that I forgot to mail you all your mince pies for the meeting today. So. <laughs> We'll have to have virtual ones. Right. Um, we now move on to um, the items on our agenda uh, for um, debate today. And um, item six, our first today, is land to the west of Ashdown House Marden, uh, number 201300, uh, proposed erection of five dwellings and associated works. Uh, can I request that um, public speakers for item six or attending as virtual attendees are um, allowed into the meeting, please? Four supposed to be coming in. Are they all in, Jen? Uh, Mr. Tompkins to come in. Mr. Tompkins. Right. Yeah, as well. They should all be with you now, Chair. I can see, yes. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Um, I believe we got Mr. Lease from uh, Marden Parish Council, Mr. Britton, a local resident. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, the applicant, and uh, Mr. Tompkins, the uh, agent. Uh, welcome to you all. Um, following the uh, officer's presentation, um, you'll be invited to uh, make your uh, three-minute um, speeches. Um, obviously, Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Tompkins will be sharing three minutes. Uh, we're quite strict with the three minutes, so um, please bear that in mind. Um, Right. The uh, first application, as I, I say, is land to the west of Ashdown Haste Marden. Um, we've got uh, Mr. Ollie Jones, the um, planning officer that will be presenting to us. The um, ward councillor for this application is uh, Councillor Kima Guthrie. She's not a member of this uh, committee, so um, will not get a vote on this application, but uh, 
has the uh, privilege of opening and closing the uh, the debate. Um, so, without further ado, move across to uh, Mr. Ollie Jones to uh, make the presentation, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good, very good morning to members. Um, firstly, thank you to those members who, who took the time to visit the site on Monday morning. I hope you found that to be useful. Um, and also just to draw members' attention to the schedule updates before them, um, which sets out further representations from local residents and the no objection consultation response from Natural England, um, which has accordingly resulted in an updated recommendation. Um, that is set out on the update sheet, but I would just draw members' attention to the fact there is an error in the wording of the updated recommendation um, by virtue of the inclusion of the word outline. So for the avoidance of any doubt, as the application is made in full, the updated recommendation is as follows. So the planning permission be granted subject to the following conditions and any, other, and any further conditions considered necessary by officers named in the scheme of delegation to officers. So the application before, mem before the committee this morning is made in full and seeks planning permission for the erection of five dwellings together with associated works. On the slide, as shown now on the screen, the, located, the location of the site is to mark by the red star as is customary. The site is located to the north of the C1120 road in which traverses the northern side of the hamlet of Lipmarsh. It's one of the roads in which links Marden to the south with Bodenham to the northeast and to clarify is subject to the national speed limit in this location. The site is essentially level and is currently laid to grass. Ashdown House lies to the east of the site with access to Barrington Water flanking the west of the site. Okay, we've got the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the application site here is marked by the red edge and the aerial photograph to, um, to the bottom of the slide just shows the site within the context of, of the surrounding area. Next slide, please. So here we have the proposed site plan with again the site edged in red and all other land owned um, by the applicant edged in blue. Um, as is illustrated, the proposal seeks the permission for a total of five dwellings, which can pre comprise of dwelling types to include a pair of semi-detached dwellings. The full breakdown of this is shown um, in figure three of the officer's report. The dwellings would be served by the creation of two points of access, which would be taken from the C1120. Each dwelling would benefit from its own curtilage and private amenity space with rear boundary of the plots being delineated by a new native species boundary hedgerow. An access strip to the remainder of the site to the rear would be retained between plots four and five. Next slide, please. Um, so we'll just now run through the plans and elevations of the proposed dwellings. The submitted details for plot one includes the provision of a detached double garage the dwelling features projecting gables of varying scales and materials proposed here are fairly typical of those found within the surrounding area, although the increased glazing features does seek to contemporize the appearance somewhat. Yeah, I can move on to the next one, please. Plot two, again, similar with regards to projecting gable ends, although overall smaller in scale than the previous, half to almost the front and an integral double garage. Next slide, please. So here we have plots three, four, plots three and plot four. You have semi-detached dwellings and are generally symmetrical with respect to their design and layout. Generally, however, the design takes its lead from the dwellings that we've seen so far, mix of brickwork and render, and from projecting gables to either side of that inserted um, porch entrance. Whilst these dwellings would not benefit from vehicle garaging, the dwellings would comprise a small lean-to entrance lobby to the side. And if we can move on to the final, um, so plot five is presented in the form of a one and a half story dwelling with varying ridge heights and dormer windows providing living accommodation above. Central projecting rear outrigger, um, which comprises full height glazing and the dwelling would also contain an integral double garage as well. Okay, so um, if we now move on to some photographs of the application site, its surroundings. Um, so here we're stood to the Southwest of the application site Obviously, you see the C1120 running east to west with the access to Barrington Water visible in the, in the foreground and as well as the existing um, gated access to the site, which can be seen again together with Ashdown House in the background. Uh, next one, please. Again, same position here, but looking um, slightly more northwards along the access to um, Barrington Water. Worth also pointing out that this road forms, um, part, forms public right of way MR3 
and that that essentially leads leads north northeastwards towards Bodenham Lakes um, to the northeast of the site. The next one, please. Um, this looks away from the site in a westerly direction. It shows the junction with the unclassified road, which leads south towards the Vold. The bus stop um, for the four the four two six bus service is located um, on this junction as well. Next slide, please. This one, um, clearly taken in, in sunnier time, shows the dwellings to the south of the application site. Um, the dwelling in the foreground to the right, known as the cider mill, and then the dwelling to the west, um, uh, and the dwelling to the east, rather, sorry, is Charnwood. Both of these benefit um, from their placement within very generous plots. And although the use of red brick is clearly takes the lead here, the varying scale of the dwellings um, are noted. Next slide, please. And again, this just looks um, across the garden belonging to the cider mill in a southwesterly direction. And visible is um, a detached red brick dwelling along the western side of the Vold Road. Next slide, please. Um, again, back to where we were before. So this is looking from the southwestern part of the site, looking um, east um, towards Ashdown House. Next one, please. Ashdown House itself, um, which is situated slight elevation compared to the site. And you'll also see faintly visible in the background is, is Little Barrington Bungalow, which, which sits slightly higher again. Okay, next one, please. Looking west from Ashdown House now, so the site to the right and the hedgerows either side of the road, you'll probably make out that the, the hedgerow to the right, so the southern boundary is, is rather sparse. Um, when compared to the, the, the boundary hedge on, on the opposite side of the road. If you could go on to the final photograph. So this one just shows the site almost in its entirety, essentially quite low, low lying and evenly shaped. And in the distance, you'll make out the wooded escarpment. So that's essentially the, the southern slopes of um, Dinmore Hill and, and Queenswood. Okay, um, if we go on to the next one, please. So the policies pertinent to the application, they're set out in section two of the officer's report, an assessment on the principle of the development when having regards to the council's current housing land supply position is set out with paragraph 6.1 to 6.15. To summarise this section, it's noted that the site lies outside, just outside the settlement boundary for Lip Marsh, and as such, there is conflict with policy M2. Um, so if we could just have the next slide here, please. So here members will see the site again in context to the surrounding built development bulk of existing residential development within Lit Marsh is taken off the Vold Road to the south of the site. Um, but sporadic development along the C1120 to the east and to the west of the Vold Road junction is present. As discussed in the officer's report, there is considered to be a sense of settlement when traversing the C1120 east to west um, and vice versa. So as such, it's considered that in locational terms, the application site is well related to the existing built form of Lit Marsh and can be considered adjacent to the settlement's main built up part. Therefore, in locational terms, officers consider that it is somewhere in which new residential development can be looked upon favourably. The density of the dwellings would be greater than those found to the immediate south, as shown in the early photographs. However, policy M2 of the MNDP seeks development in hamlets to maintain an appropriate density in context with the immediate surrounding area, whilst policy M3 states the proposal should maintain the historic pattern of development by respecting the layout associated with historic plots in the immediate area. As set out at paragraph 6.17 of the officer's report, the dwellings to the south of the site are more recent additions to the hamlet and benefit from what are considered to be notably large curtilages. But having regard to the historic pattern of development in Elip Marsh, that along the Vold Road and to a lesser extent along the C1120, and noting that the site is not contiguous with notably open agricultural land, it is not considered that the development would be that which would be of an unacceptable density and which would be out of keeping in this location. Furthermore, the layout with notable setbacks from the highway and sufficient spacing between the dwellings would ensure that the development would not result in the loss of the general sense of openness in which is found here. In terms of amenity between the dwellings and those neighbouring, it's not considered that the proposal would result in a prejudicial, prejudicial residential relationship, and therefore no conflict with policy SD1 or M3 is identified in this regard. Landscaping details would be secured by condition no disproportionate loss of hedgerow or natural features is proposed. Um, just to clarify, the only loss of hedgerow would be to accommodate the two points of access to the site, 
each requiring the removal of around nine meters of hedgerow. Members may have noted that the roadside hedgerow is, is rather sparse as I, as I touched upon um, in the earlier photograph. Um, the site is considered to be a naturally contained site, which abuts residential development to the east and track to the west with a vegetative barrier to the north. And as such, the proposal is not considered to present as an unnatural or unconstrained incursion into open countryside and thus would help to retain existing field patterns in accordance with policy M10. It is low lying and is not considered to appear, to appear prominent from wider vantage points and as such there is considered to be no tension in respect of the relevant policies of the development plan concerning landscapes, namely policy M10 and LB1. The dwelling types would utilise locally appropriate materials and the very design would respond to the ad hoc nature, design and scale of the dwellings here. Therefore, it is considered that there is accordance with policy SD1, LD1, M3 and M10 of the development plan. Moving on to highways matters, the proposed access points can demonstrate achievement of the requisite visibility displays. Um, concerns over the suitability of the road network are noted, but officers consider that the provision of five dwellings would not lead to a vehicular uplift, which would result in an unacceptable impact on the local highway network, or consider that the cumulative impacts on the highway network would be severe in context of that in which is set out at paragraph 109 of the NPPF. Adequate on-site parking and turning is provided for each dwelling and as such noting that the transportation manager raises no objection to the proposal, officers consider the proposal accords with MT1 and M3 of the development plan. Further attention is also here drawn to the availability of sustainable modes of transport. There are regular bus services from just outside of the site, the bus stop being on the vol turning as shown in the, in the previous photograph. Buses provide suitable and convenient access to Lempster to the north and Hereford City to the south, together with local amenities provided in both nearby Bodenham and Marden, um, and also bicycle storage would be secured by condition. In terms of ecology and biodiversity, the Council's planning ecologist has reviewed the submitted preliminary ecological appraisal and recommends conditions to secure a fully, fully detailed construction environmental management plan and a detailed scheme and annotated location plan for proposed biodiversity net gain enhancement features. The application, however, has identified measures for enhancement of the site, given that at present it is of low ecological value. This includes the planting of new native species hedgerows and wildfire planting in areas of open space. Details of this would need to be demonstrated to be forthcoming as part of the net gain scheme and or the landscaping scheme wherever where, where relevant. Um, to touch upon concerns in respect of the loss of prime agricultural land, this is covered in paragraph 6.54 to 6.56 of the officer's report. To summarise, officers can confirm that according to Natural England's agricultural land classification map for the West Midlands region, the site is classified as grade three. That's the middle grading where land is described to be good um, to moderate. Officers note that the abundance of land of a higher grading within close proximity to the site um, uh, and given the fact that only a small amount of land would be taken out of agricultural use, there would be no um, conflict with um, policy SS6 of the core strategy in this regard. Turning to drainage and flooding, the site's located within flood zone one and there are no recorded fluvial or pluvial flooding risks associated with the site. However, permeability at the site is poor and as such surface water is proposed to be dealt with by way of an attenuation tank. This will be sited at the front of the dwellings um, and this method is not objected to in principle by the council's land drainage engineer with details of um, this method to be forthcoming as part of a full drainage strategy which will be secured um, again by condition. Foul water would be dealt with by way of individual package treatment plants discharging to drainage mounds um, on the northern portion of the site so to the rear of the gardens essentially. Um, the standard linear drainage field in this location is not considered to be suitable given the low permeability and an indicative drawing of the proposed mound is provided at paragraph 6.35 of the report. And again, full details of the final specification and design of this would be forthcoming as part of the, of, um, the full drainage strategy to be secured by condition. Um, and just to um, conclude on both of those matters of drainage, the details of the management and maintenance of both foul and surface and water strategies would come forward as, as details to be secured by way of condition again. Um, so with, with matters of drainage in mind, it's noted the proposal is cited within the catchment of the River Lug, sub-catchment of the River Y, special area of conservation. The proposal has been assessed by the Council's planning ecologist and a habitats regulation assessment screening assessment has been undertaken. 
and this concludes that due to the application meeting the five criteria as laid out in the, the latest council's position statement as agreed by the council and natural england there'll be no likely significant effects on the integrity of the special area of conservation as per the update sheet natural england raised no objection concurring with the council's conclusions as set out in the completed appropriate ass assessment um, finally, turning to the fact that Herefordshire Council unanimously passed a motion declaring a climate emergency. And with this resolution came a county-wide aspiration to be zero carbon by 2030. This application proposes a number of measures which seek to ta help tackle Herefordshire's fight against climate change. At the point of submission, the application proposed vehicle charging points along with the use of sustainable energy generation techniques, including air source heat pumps and solar panels, and noting the dwellings face south, they would benefit from solar gain. More lastly, the applicant has completed the Council's climate change compliance checklist, which further sets out the steps that have been taken in the formulation of the scheme to ensure that the proposal has regard to the climate emergency and explicitly demonstrates ways in which it can assist Herefordshire's effort in mitigating the impact of new development on climate change. To conclude, therefore, the application must be considered in the context of the Council's inability to demonstrate the required five-year housing land supply and that prescribed by par paragraph 11D of the MPPF. Attention is also drawn to paragraph 14 of the MPPF, which advises that where the pos positive presumption applies to applications relating to the supply of housing, the adverse impacts of allowing development that con conflicts with an NDP is likely to significantly and demonstrably outweigh the be benefits, provided that certain criteria of an NDP are met, one of which is that the neighbourhood plan became part of the development plan two years or less before the date on which the decision is made. Given that the modern neighbourhood development plan became part of the development plan more than two years ago, in 2016, the Marden Neighbour Development Plan does not benefit from the enhanced, enhanced protection afforded by paragraph 14, and thus the positive presumption remains engaged. Taking the matters and considerations as set out in, the, as set out in full in the officer's report, officers are of the view that the proposal is representative of a sustainable form of development and can accordingly be recommended for approval. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, as I've stated before, we have four speakers um, with two of the speakers sharing one of the three minute slots. Um, I'd now like to invite Mr. Lees to um, uh, speak. And um, as I just mentioned, you have three minutes uh, in your own time, please, Mr. Lees. Thank you. Okay. The NDP made in October 2016 um, and is, is currently uh, being reviewed and updated due to Hereford Council not meeting their five-year land supply target. The NDP is currently in Regulation 14 consultation for the reviewed plan. Indicative targets set by Hereford Council for Marden for the made NDP was allocation for 60 dwellings. In fact, 95 were allocated in the plan. Much thought and effort was put into the NDP to ensure we met and exceeded this target. Official numbers currently show that the parish has significantly exceeded the target with 50 more dwellings than the indicative target, 110. The current application, whilst well thought out, is outside the Litmarsh settlement boundary, so is in non-conformity with Marden NDP policy M2. As it is an open countryside, it should be determined against core strategy policy. Both the made NDP and the review from uh, plan currently in Regulation 14 consultation have the aim to leave Litmarsh and the other small settlements without further development other than windfall with an agreed settlement boundary or as a single dwelling allocated in the review draft plan, which will be within the settlement boundary once the plan is remade. A good agricultural land will be lost and the proposed density for the development is not in keeping with other properties in the area so the application is in non-conformity with policy M2 and M3. The site is adjacent to MR3 footpath access track to Barrington Water, which is used regularly by walkers and HGVs accessing Barrington Water. The access is near a road junction and after the bend on a narrow country road, therefore in non-conformity with policy M3. The PC is concerned about the proximity of the site to a watercourse and lake and the risk of detrimental effect on wildlife from sewage or runoff contamination, so in non-conformity with policy M11. Two previous applicants, 151485 and 152 
314 for a single house and bungalow respectively were refused. Therefore, the parish council considers the application for five dwellings with an increased loss of agricultural land, much greater proximity to MR3 and increased uh, waste to be disposed of is unsustainable and does not conform to the NDP core strategy or NPPF. Right, thank you, Mr. Lees. Um, I'd now like to um, call upon Mr. Britton uh, for your three minutes, please, in your own time. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Many of the, the residents of Litmarsh object to this proposal of executive housing development, as indicated by over 50 objections, for the following principal reasons. Number one, Foul drainage. The mounds, as far as we can read, have not been approved and are reliant on a lot of other conditions being met in advance. Also, they are not within the owned property's boundaries. The environmental reports are inconclusive and reliant on many pre-qualifications with no firm plan for future upkeep, repatriation agreements if breaches are made. There are a number of caveats and one report even suggested the design was asking, was asking soakage to run uphill. The runoff of the foul drainage can leach into Barrington Lake and beyond via the main field drain, which leads to the already beleaguered river Lug with its protected contaminated area. Two, runoff alluvial flooding. Whilst the report from Hydrologic reference 3.1 states, the new developments will not be affected by flooding. It also stated there will be an increased runoff, which will cause a flood risk further down to Litmarsh. Personally, I currently experience flooding from our lane into my driveway after heavy rain, with water coming into with one inch of breaching the house. Further runoff may push this over the edge. We are not the only property in this situation. Three, this is not part of the democratically agreed Martin development plan, and goes against the principle of M2, requiring houses to fit in with local aesthetics, which this development falls short of being urban in design. Four, turning prime agricultural land into a building site rather than developing more proposed suitable sites within the hamlet. Five, increased road traffic on an already busy sea road with further damage to the road resulting. Six, Planning was previously refused twice in 2015. Seven, it is a highly controversial site within the community and any further outcome might have to be, could be referred to an independent authority. For those of you who visited the site on Monday, you can see this is an inappropriate development for this area. This is certainly not a case of nimbyism as we have supported many other smaller individual developments which are in keeping within the hamlet. Five executive homes airdropped into a field is just not right for this area and frankly is a brick too far. Thank you for your considerations. Thank you very much, Mr. Britton. Um, I now move across to uh, Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Tompkins. Um, as I've previously stated, you have three minutes between you. I'm not too sure which, which one of you is going to start, but... Uh, between you, you will have uh, made up your decision on that. So in your own time, please, three minutes. Um, Mr. Rhodes, you're muted. Hold up. Okay. Yep, that's fine, thank you. Um, so um, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee for um, considering our application, in particular, the council's planning team and specifically the planning manager for their guidance and their inputs, and on, a, on the odd occasion, their patience as well. Uh, my name is Simon Rhodes, and together with my family, I've lived in Herefordshire for the past 37 years. I recently retired from a pro professional career working in the food and drink industry, including more than 30 years spent working with Bulmers and Cargill based in Hereford. I now run a startup company called Taste Herefordshire, which supports Hereford's artisan food and drink producers, uh, by developing new routes to market. I also sit on the Council's Visitor Economic Project Steering Group, 
aimed at supporting the county's economic recovery post-COVID. I live at Ashdown House next to the proposed development and would very much like it to remain, would very much like to remain in Lipmarsh, both as a community and a geographically as a base from which to work within the county. Um, we, were very, we very much value where we live and the environment which surrounds us, hence our application, which we believe has real merit. Uh, as my own proposed plot is a self-build project where my family and I aim to live for many years, it's extremely important that on completion, the development enhances our community um, and it's setting and delivers real benefits uh, to the future growth of our community. Based on the advice of the planning team, our designers sought to avoid an urban style, one size fits all approach, typically featuring executive style housing, high density dwellings and uniform style, which we believe to be inappropriate for the village setting. Uh, environmental sustainability is important to us, given this will be our home for years to come, resulting in us embracing and incorporating green technologies in response to the climate emergency. Uh, as a self-builder, I'll also be seeking to use local tradesmen and suppliers wherever possible in our build process in support of our local economy. Overall, we hope this development will attract people who are currently unable to live in or wish to continue to live in this community. Thank you, I'll hand over to Matt. Thank you. Uh, the applicant first engaged in pre-application advice to the council and officers confirmed they were supportive of the principal development and then throughout the application phase, the finer detail of the scheme was amended to meet officers' advice. The scheme is one which delivers housing that responds to the need for two and three bed dwellings in the area <coughs> The scheme also delivers on-site energy generation, south-facing dwellings and electric vehicle charging points. These elements were included from the outset and were not directly in response to the Council's recently published sustainability checklist, which shows that sustainability has been at the heart of this development from the start. I consider the scheme to be one which is truly representative of sustainable development and hope that you are able to grant planning permission for your officer's recommendation. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, kept in within the three minutes so uh, very good for that. Um, I'd now like to request that our four virtual attendees leave the meeting. I remind them that they can watch the live stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube channel. Uh, thank you all very much and good day to you all. Okay, I think they've all gone. Uh, so now I move across to um, Ward Member uh, Councillor Kima Guthrie um, to open the debate. Uh, Councillor Guthrie, please. Thank you, Chairman. Firstly, can you hear me clearly? We can, yes. Yep, good. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the case officer for his report and particularly thank um, all members of the committee who were able to attend the site meeting held on Monday. I think it was important for members to view the settings and surroundings of this site, as it is located in a particularly rural area. It is in the parish of Marden and in, within the small hamlet of Litmarsh and adjacent to the C1120, uh, which is an extremely narrow, narrow country lane. The key points I, I'd like to draw members' attention to are as follows. It's interesting, the planning history, which is detailed on the officer report at 3.1 and 3.2, there have been two previous planning applications on the same site, which have been refused. And that reason given was the principle of the development in this location is unacceptable, in open countryside, unsustainable, and not an exception. The site is outside of the modern neighborhood development plan. The proposed development is outside the, the Litmarsh settlement boundary, according to the original 2016 Marden Neighbourhood Development Plan. And currently, the NDP is being reviewed and was updated in November 2020. It is very important to note that the settlement boundaries 
for Lick Marsh, Hamlet, remain exactly the same and remain unchanged. Detailed in the officer report, paragraph 2.3 states, it is noted that Marden Parish Council submitted their reviewed draft neighbourhood development plan to Herefordshire Council on the 26th of November 2020. The consultation period runs from 30th of November 2020 to 15th of January 2021. At this Regulation 14 draft plan stage, the draft neighbourhood development plan can be afforded limited weight. However, on this occasion, I have a differing view, and I strongly appeal to members of this committee to duly give much weight to the modern neighbourhood development plan and to the many public representations who raised concerns over the following issues. Highways, the small network of roads around Marden and Lickmarsh are sadly in a bad state of repair, repeatedly being subject to numerous heavy goods vehicles. The C1120 is a narrow road and not wide enough in many places for two-way traffic. It is already too busy with lorries to and from the local Barrington Water Factory, agricultural traffic and many other types of HG traffic as well. Often highways problems are exasperated due to the road frequently being used as a rat run when the A49 Dinmore Hill is closed between the A417 junction. The C1120 road gives, goes over a very steep hill locally known as the God Almighty. Unfortunately, there have been regular incidents with HGVs getting stuck sometimes jackknifing and blocking the road. And also a new road surface, which was uh, meant to be a temporary tarmac, was put in place a few years ago. And during winter months, this surface becomes extremely slippery and quite often turns into a skid -like, like skid pad, which can be highly dangerous for all road users. Moving on to flooding, there is localised flooding already, uh, which is a major problem in the area. Water runoff flows down from the hill surrounding the entrances, as we've heard from uh, one of the representations earlier, to nearby properties, and ultimately pooling at the bottom of the hill at the junction with the vault. The drain to the vault is often blocked and therefore makes flooding problem at this location much worse. And the proposed increase in uh, properties at this location, the, the concern is that the runoff water will increase and cause a worse uh, flooding problem. Uh, many of the injectors highlight drainage concerns. An, ex an extract from one representation reads as follows. The proposed site slopes towards a small pond, which in the past has been a reservoir for great crested newts and other wildlife, which would be polluted by the septic tanks needed for these properties. This would also threaten nearby Lake at Barrington Farm, a well-established haven for wild birds, including migrating wa waterfowl. All ditches and runoff flow down the slope to the adjacent river Lug. The building of any more properties on this site would adversely affect the local ecology and increase phosphate levels in groundwater and ultimately reach the River Lug, which is a designated triple SI and SAC, which would have potential to increase the already high phosphate levels, which are causing eutrophication and a peak in algal blooms. In addition, the drainage mounds will have a negative impact, significantly increasing the area of development, possibly increased detrimental risk to the nearby lake and river log, causing further uh, increase to the phosphate levels in the log catchment area. Also, possibly the unsightly mounds will have a detrimental visual impact on the footpath, which is MR3. This is a very well used walking route and makes up part of the Bodenham circular route, 
This starts at Bodenham Church, loops round to the Vern, and then loops back to Bodenham via uh, Barrington Farm and, and then back to Bodenham Church. The street scene, the, the proposed ribbon type suburban modern development uh, next to this lane is not in keeping with the cluster type of development within Litmarsh Hamlet. And as always been mentioned, there is a loss of good agricultural land. Finally, I'd like to urge members to refuse this application on the following grounds. It is contrary to RA2 of the core strategy point three, the result in the development does not result in a high quality sustainable scheme appropriate and make a positive contribution to the surrounding environment and its landscape setting. Contrary to LD1 of the core strategy, and uh, again, my view is that uh, the proposal does not protect and enhance the setting of lit marsh. Um, policy, policy M2, which has already been mentioned by the Parish Council, M3 and M11, it is contrary to the uh, Neighbourhood Development Plan and uh, the NPPF as well regarding sustainable development. So, Finally, members, please support the many local residents with neighbouring properties adjacent to this site with those concerns and Marden Parish Council and the local NDP and refuse this application. I look forward to the, hearing the debate and um, look forward to my obviously making a closing remarks at the end. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Guthrie. Uh, we now go into the debate proper, and uh, I've got Councillor Johnson indicating uh, as our first speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wondered if I could begin by asking the officer, um, whilst I was at the site visit, I cannot remember if there is a ditch between the hedge and the road uh, to the south of the site. I think there was, but I'm not sure. Um, could the officer confirm if there is a ditch there? I didn't notice one myself, but um, no. I'll ask uh, Mr Jones to uh, comment, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. There, there is a watercourse that runs along, runs along the southern boundary of the site. Um, it is culverted in parts, but yeah, it runs along the, the entirety of that um, southern boundary of the, of the application site. Thank you. The um, <clears throat> Uh, that being the case, um, I would have uh, an observation, or a couple of observations. Number one, the, uh, the proposed development does look um, very suburban uh, and, in my view, out of place in the um, apparent, you know, the, the, the view of Litmarsh in general. But uh, the other thing is that uh, if there is a, uh, a ditch running down that hedge, what I would be interested to know is if this uh, application were to be approved, who would be responsible subsequent to completion of the building? Who would be responsible for the maintenance of the culverting of that ditch and the uh, maintenance of the um, foul water disposal plans at the back. If the officer could give us some indication on that, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chairman. I mean, um, I would I would refer to um, the the relevant paragraphs of the report, which which touch upon flooding and and drainage. But essentially, the details with regards to both surface water management and foul water management would would be forthcoming as part of a of a, a as details to be secured by way of condition. Um, it, it has been pointed out in the comments from the land drainage engineer with regards to the maintenance and, and management of these strategies and, and therefore there is there is a condition that's recommended to ensure that there is a management plan in place for the lifetime of, of the development in terms of these if, of the surface and foul water drainage strategies. Thank you chairman the uh, <clears throat> and thanks to the officer for his answers. Um, I look forward to the rest of the debate, but my, my view at the moment, unless persuaded otherwise, is that this is an inappropriate development for this site. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilding, please. 
Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll start off also with a question uh, for the officer. Um, looking at the proposal, I see there is a, um, a strip <coughs> And being left um, to gain access to the rest of the site. Um, so my question is, basically, why is that there? Uh, access to the rest of the site could be obtained from the road going down the side. Um, so I'm wondering whether that strip of land has been left there deliberately so that at a future date, um, a road could be put in there and uh, extra stuff put in. So that's the first question. Right. I think I think you need to um, have your three minutes and I'll ask the officer to comment okay. afterwards. Fine. All right. Well, um, let's get on to the main point then. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the um, ecological side of this because I think other people are going to. What I'm going to talk about is the design of the buildings. I note that uh, Mr Rhodes said... He's committed to green technology. His representative said it's a sustainable development and that they've worked with the council planning department on it and that they can make use of solar panels and a south facing uh, design. I don't see any solar panels put on any of the drawings. I don't see any south facing roofs on the design. They all look to be facing, well, the houses are orientated southeast. Not, uh, with a, with a little link, chink of the way they're aligned, they could be totally south facing. Um, the roofs and the designs of the buildings have got all sorts of uh, projections out of them and, and windows in the roofs, which will stop future um, solar panels being fitted. So my question is, if they are so committed to green technology, and uh, making an ecologically fit house for the 21st century. How come this isn't reflected in the design? How come this is just added as what appears to me to be an afterthought, just to try and convince us that uh, uh, they've taken it into account? As far as I can see, there has been no account taken of um, ecological concerns when it comes to the design. So for that reason, Purely for that reason, I'd want to refuse this. They have to go away and think about this and come up with a better design if they want to build here. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Um, now, there was a question with regards to the access uh, point. Uh, so I'll ask uh, Mr. Jones to comment on that first, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, in terms in terms of the access to the rear of the site, obviously, you know, we're assessing the application on, on the basis of what's been submitted by the applicant. I think the, the reason for what well, this access is is purely to for that there is a you know safe and, and easy access to the rear of the site. Obviously, the, the drainage mounds are going to be located to the rear portion of the site, to the northern portion of the site. So it is important that there is there is adequate access to to the rear of the of the site. So I think that's essentially the rationale behind that. Um, hopefully that, that sort of answers your question. Right, thank you. Um, I would also think that uh, probably uh, the um, road down to um, Barrington Waters is a private road and, and they haven't actually got access off that, so they need to um, have access themselves off their own property or through their own property. Uh, Councillor Bowen, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Manage the unmuting. Uh, yes, the interesting points here, I think, and one of them is the neighborhood development plan and the settlement boundary. We keep on say, be having it said to us that, oh, it's only just a little addition to the settlement boundary, it's only just outside, and therefore it's okay. Well, actually, I don't think it is okay, is it? If we keep on like this, we will actually make the settlement boundary a complete nullity. And uh, what's the point of having a settlement boundary if we never actually observe it? I do think that's it, it is important. Um, and it has had refusals on this site twice. What has been the big change as suddenly it's all good to go, I wonder. Uh, also good farmland. Yes, it's grade three, which is in the middle of the range, I know, but it's still pretty decent farmland, I think. We keep saying, oh, there's plenty of it. We just have a little nibble here and a little nibble there. And eventually you nibble away most of it, which is not what was required, I think. Um, the 
sewage system worries me as well, in that you've got to have access to the uh, various sediment, sed sediment pits for taking away the sludge. There's also a little scum there. Um, but the sludge will need desludging on a regular basis. What happens if the pumps break down? And pumps are not unknown to break down. And it's quite a complicated system in many ways. And you also do have, I think, the worry that there could be some uh, influence upon both Bodenham Lakes and also upon Barrington Water. Uh, even though it does say that it, well, this this mound system will contain it all or most of it. Um, well, it's a fairly unproven system, I think, so far. And I would be very concerned about the general maintenance and its efficiencies. Um, so basically, NDP, the neighborhood development plans should be given due weight, I think, and I feel there's not happening here. And I understand the other concerns concerning the, the flooding as well, which I think is relevant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bowen. Uh, I'm minded that we've got no proposal on the table um, as yet. Councillor Rowan, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, can I say at 6.27, the bus map, I don't know if that's Mr. Bishop's idea or if that's Mr. Jones's idea, but can I ask that with every application that comes before us now, especially if it is out in the sticks, that could be included because I thought that was brilliant. You know, straight information rather than have to go off and look. And, and it really does give a, a picture of, you know, how far it is to town, how quick you can get to town. And the fact that you know, if you are working a nine to five or you're a student, you can get on a bus 50 yards away. For me, that is a real, real bound. I always go on about it at every site meeting, pubs, shops, buses, where are they? How long does it take to get there? Um, I will say members, I am at a disadvantage for not going to the site meeting. I realize now that how important they are. But looking at these, um, uh, the document that I did yesterday afternoon with the extra couple of hours that we had, um, to me, my scribblings, a lot of colleagues have mentioned some of them, but um, it's outside the settlement boundary, although adjacent to. Uh, it looks very suburban. It looks like something you'd find as you came into town or into one of the much bigger villages. It wouldn't look out of place in the in the uh, the village of Sutton. It wouldn't look out of place in the approaches coming up Elston Hill. I do think it is a little bit too a little bit too granular. There's uh, I noticed forty plus objections. Regardless of that, that's 20 households in the area objecting to it, the parish councillor objecting, the local member objecting, and we've got to give weight to these opinions. Uh, why else would we ask the parish councils to go through the NDPs if we don't give great regard to them? Uh, I, I'm, I'm finding it really difficult at the moment, but I'd be really keen to hear what fellow uh, members have got to say, but uh, and to me, I'm very much sitting on the wall, airing towards uh, going against officer recommendation, I'm afraid to say. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Rowan. Councillor Fagan, please. Yeah, um, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused about the, the, the sort of situation with the drainage. As, as far as I understand that there are, um, it, it hasn't been completely agreed and that it, it will be, conditions will be in place to, to make sure that all those arrangements, um, such as the management of the mounds, etc., cetera, are, are agreed. I would just like clarification on that because it, it doesn't seem clear as far as I understand uh, somebody mentioned septic tanks I don't think septic tanks are involved at all and um, so just clarification on that but then also on uh, rainwater harvesting I I wonder if in you know applications like this where they're proposing sort of five additional houses and obviously the impact the surface impact of surface water on that to me that uh, sort of cries out for rainwater harvesting so I'd be interested uh, to hear from Mr Jones about rainwater harvesting if that has been considered and if that could be um, added as a as a condition um, and then again just just to say about the NDP that uh, 
while I completely understand the parish council's position on this, it is really unfortunate actually that as far as I understand, the NDP is only at regulation 14 now because of the review process, which does give it less, less weight. And uh, I, I note that it's it's gone in for reconsultation now, but that is sort of two years after the, um, the, the kind of expiry day on the NDP. So I feel that it, it's, it's really important that NDPs are kept up to date because otherwise you end up in a situation like this where it doesn't carry the weight that it, it should carry for the community. But if I can just have clarification, please, about the rainwater harvesting and the just the situation with the drainage, if, is it sort of um, going to be by condition along the way incremental? Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jones. Please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank, thank you, Councillor Fagan, for those um, for those comments and questions. Um, with firstly, with regards to um, the drainage mounds and and sort of the the surface and foul water drainage, actually um, holistically, um, the finer details are are to be agreed, um, and that obviously includes the the makeup of the mound, um, and obviously the, the makeup of the mound depends on. Um, you know, soak away testing and outfall from each of the dwellings as to you know how large they need to be, um, and, and where they will be positioned. Um, so that will that will form part of of the drainage condition, um, along with the management of those as well. Um, so th hopefully hopefully that answers your question. So those those details are sort of yet to be forthcoming. Um, with regards to rainwater harvesting. Um, I draw your attention to the, um, the completion of the of the climate change measures compliance checklist, which which the um, applicant has has completed. Um, and just to, I mean, I, that is touched upon in the report. But just to sort of run through what what they are proposing is, um, they've they've considered the building orientation, they've considered thermal thermally efficient materials, energy efficient heating systems. Heat, um, they've also considering solar panels as I said will be secured by condition um, along with air source heat pumps um, and they you know so touch on solar panels and um, cycle storage um, and electric vehicle charging points so they have they have considered a number of um, sustainability credentials uh, climate change um, compliance checklist credentials um, and officers are of the view that that is is commensurate to the to the scale of, of the scheme obviously it is, it's not possible to to propose everything, but um, as I said, officers consider that what they're proposing um, with this development is commensurate to the to the scale of the scheme. Hopefully, that answers the question. Sir. I think that's a pretty full uh, response. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Councillor Milne. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, in inevitably, with uh, um, there being references to there having been previous applications on the site. Uh, one turns to have a look at the reasons for refusal of them. And um, I mean, we do obviously very often see applications that come before us that uh, that are refused and then then are returned, usually scaled back so that um, uh, they, they better meet uh, or have a better chance of meeting uh, policy criteria. But here the reverse is the case because the previous applications were smaller in scale and we've got one that's larger in scale. But whether or not the scale is an issue, the, prin the pr basic principles do not seem so very different. So um, while I, I grant you that we, we, we treat every case on its merits, um, and that I accept that, um, for example, with regard to the 151415 application that was only objected to, I think, by a very a handful of people, in contrast to the, the very stronger um, response from the local community that we see in the present one, uh, the um, the the present proposal still still would fail under uh, the, the 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 present um, NPPF and and core strategy criteria that we may measure under uh, that uh, tran have translated through from the older um, uh, unitary development plan for, uh, that expired in 2015. So we, it's still a site that's clearly in the open country, countryside that. Um, uh, is outside the agreed settlement boundary and it's in a greenfield site, which was the principal reason for its refusal last time. It's isolated from services and facilities, as I'm quoting here or paraphrasing here from the, the, from the reasons to refusal last time. Uh, the proposal fails to demonstrate compliance with any of the exceptional criteria 
of the prevailing policies. Um, uh, <coughs> so, um, and it um, uh, f f fails to state that sustainable development will be promoted by directing ne necessary new development to location settlements and site sites that best need, need meet the need of appropriate sustainable development criteria. Um, uh, so I, I do struggle slightly to make a difference between the reasons why the previous applications were refused, uh, particularly granted that they were smaller than the present one, and why we're, we're asked to to um, accept uh, and approve this this application. So at the moment, I'm uh, I'm not absolutely dis decided in, in the way I'm going to vote, but but I am minded uh, to refuse but I don't feel quite confident enough to propose a refusal at the moment. So, and I see this further blue hand, so I shall uh, stop at this point and listen to the rest of the debate. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Mill. Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think most of it has been said, but this is a Greenfield site outside the existing settlement boundary. Uh, the linear design seems to me to be entirely urban in its characteristics. And uh, from what uh, Mr. Jones has just said, even the drainage system seem to be still open to um, further review, consultation, I'm not sure quite the word to use, but they certainly don't seem to be settled. So I would be extremely happy, unhappy at the present moment to support this application. All right. Uh, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Councillor Bowen for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are, and if you look in the plans of the drainage mounds, you'll find there are settlement pits before they get to the pumping uh, pit and then the actual mound and its um, ways of drainage, draining water. So you will need access to that quite strongly uh, to deal with the settlement of sludge, etc. Um, we've had a lot of uh, good debate, I think, and I would propose refusal of this application uh, with some, some regret because I think they've tried quite hard to get it right, but uh, it is still I think out of the settlement boundary, it is at more, more stress on the road system. It is probably conducive to extra flooding as well, and so on and so on. Um, so that's my proposition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bowen. Have we a seconder for that proposal, please? Councillor Johnson, you second in that motion? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, now move to uh, Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, and whilst I have sympathy with the local residents and the parish council, I cannot see any grounds whereby this will stand up, but on a, a will be upheld on appeal, uh, a refusal. <laughs> We're getting ourselves into a mess, I think, some here. If we're not careful, you know, we shall we shall lose the ability to decide planning applications as the government would love us to do. Um, we are in a position. What has changed to a large amount is that we are not passing or getting enough housing in, on our five-year supply, and that is getting worse. And we're getting to the point, I think, by next year where we will dip below the three years, and then it will be a free-for-all everywhere. And places like Marden and the villages, especially on the on the east of the county, will be inundated with planning applications. So, you know, to to give the grounds of uh, being outside the settlement boundary, when we've given numerous planning planning applications permission locally, and have been granted some on appeal nationally, then you know I I just can't see how we're going to be able to to sustain that position on appeal and the financial implications may be substantial. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Stone, followed by Councillor Wilding. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. I think it's very telling that two previous applications on the site were refused. Um, and um, I don't really see why this particular one should be third time lucky. Um, I found um, Ollie Jones's presentation at the beginning of the meeting very persuasive, 
but having listened to the local member and looked at the views of the parish council and also um, what was stated in the NDP, um, I'm persuaded now that this is not um, a good application to support and I'm uh, very much concerned about the flooding issue, which has just been mentioned. Looking out this morning at the heavy rain we've had um, reminds us of how many problems there are with flooding throughout Herefordshire. And we seem to add to these when we give um, support to developments like this out in the open countryside where the drainage issues haven't been uh, totally resolved or thought through. Um, there does seem some confusion about drainage generally around the site. I'm not really reassured by what I heard about that. So to sum up, um, I shall not be supporting this application um, on settlement boundary, flooding issues, drainage, roads, and also going back to the planning history. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Stone. Councillor Wilding for a second, uh, Stab. Thank you. Um, thanks, Chairman. Um, it's, it's finely balanced, I think, this one, because I do take what uh, Councillor James says and others have said about us um, not building enough houses. I also do think that this, uh, the field, when we stood in it, really doesn't deserve to have all these houses in it. Uh, I'm not certain, though, whether I can support just saying refusal. So... I'd like what I'd like to see is a deferment and the applicant come back with a design that had maybe just two or three truly sustainable houses on it that really were exemplary in their design. And that's the only way I'd support it. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, well, we've already got a motion table for refusal of this application. Um, so I can't take one for deferment. Um, we've got no further speakers registered, um, so I'd like to turn to um, officers for comments before um, I go back to the local ward member. Thank you. Mr Bishop. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, can I get you out of the conundrum of the previous refusals? The previous refusals were dealt with under the UDP where this site, this area was not identified for, for, um, for growth. That's the reason why they were refused, and quite rightly so. You are dealing with an application under the, under the core strategy where lit marsh is identified the, where, where growth can occur and is identified within your core strategy. That's the, first, that's the first aspect. Second aspect, the NDP is only, you can only uh, allocate limited weight because the, the settlement boundary is up for discussion. It will go through the, 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 the due processes of consultation, and, what, and when it gets to a point and greater weight can be added, that settlement boundary could well, be, could well be changed. That's why only limited weight is identified. The drainage, the drainage has been worked up to a position where it's considered in principle acceptable. And it's only the finer details that need to be resolved. They are package treatment plants. They are not septic tanks. They are package treatment planks, and they will drain to a, a mound. There is no pathway from that mound to the water courses around. That has been confirmed by Natural England's acceptance of the AA. Um, the design of the houses, the houses have been, have been designed around, not if they are fronting the road, but, but, but they are offset from the road and they are in, a, in an arc, 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 arc in, um, a, a appearance to the road. They, they are, they've been designed with a local vernacular, taking the local vernacular into account, where you have those dormers into the roofs, which are quite common and as Mr. Jones identified in the, in the pictures, and you would have seen on the site with the local with the local vernacular out there, and also with the with the with the pallet of materials as well. So those have all been taken into account. The the houses are south facing. They are, they do enable solar panels to be to be uh, fitted, um, and they are south they are south southeast facing. 
a direct south facing is is not good from a climate change perspective. They need to be south southeast or southwest. That is the most because otherwise houses get overheated. And that's why in this instance they they are facing the way they are. The officers clearly identified the uh, the the policy route for for the proposal. Rain is being captured, so there will be an, an, an um, in the surface water drainage um, tanks. So there will be a, a benefit to the area in that respect. Uh, and the and the and the, the one aspect which members haven't picked up on, which I am slightly disappointed, is the size of the dwellings. In that they're that they are not for they are not for four bed executive style dwellings that you're being asked to approve here. They are two two beds and three three beds, which the uh, housing strategy re is a requirement for the area, and that is what's being proposed, and that is why it was put forward and negotiated on that basis. Thank you, Chairman. Hey, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, I'm now going to go back to. Um, Councillor Guthrie to, uh, to sum up, but um, before we actually go to the vote, I shall need um, reasons for refusal against officer recommendation from the uh, proposer and seconder. So uh, if they uh, have that in mind and are ready uh, following Councillor Guthrie's uh, closing statements, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Members. Uh, many thanks for your contribution to the debate and taking on concerns of all the local residents. Uh, indeed, this is a, a town-like high-density housing proposal, which is out of keeping for the small hamlet of Litmarsh, which is likely to exasperate flooding, potential runoff, drainage problems, and highways problems that are already at this location. So once again, I urge members to uh, refuse this application and uh, consider reasons for refusal as uh, M2, M3, M11 of um, the modern neighborhood development plan and policy LD1 of the uh, core strategy. Many thanks and thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Guthrie. Uh, now I'm going to turn uh, to um, Councillor Bowen and uh, Councillor Johnson for reasons for refusal, please. Is it in that order, Chairman, or do you...? Well, it, it's normally the proposer um, oh. that I would Chairman. go to, but um, I, I'm happy for you to put them forwards. Yeah. So uh, I'm unmuted now. Um, uh, do, you want to, do you want me to speak, Chairman, or do you yeah. would like uh, Councillor Johnson? If, if, if you've got something to say, Councillor Bowen, carry well, on. I think we need to carry on with uh, this is contrary to M2, M3, M11, LD1 in the core strategy. It is new housing in open countryside. Uh, there's problems with drainage and highways. The drainage system is not. Uh, shall we say, well-tested or proven in this case, and anywhere at all, I think, uh, that we have concerns uh, with, with all those matters. So M2, M3, M11, LD1 as basics, and I'm very happy to uh, defer to Councillor Johnson for any further additions to this, please. Okay, uh, Councillor Johnson. Uh, no, nothing further, uh, Chairman. Um, uh, my reasons would be those stated by the uh, local ward member and by the proposer, uh, Councillor Bowen. <clears throat> um, I would only add if it means anything at all. Uh, I do believe that it is, uh, the proposal is visually inappropriate for this setting. It does not match the rest of the village. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, Mr Bishop, are you content? And Mrs Evans, are you content with the reasons for refusal given? You're muted, uh, Mr. Bishop. Chairman, when you have professional advice from your highways officers and the drainage officers that the, those details are acceptable, they will be very difficult to defend those issues. 
um, the issue of of, uh, of townscape um, that has been identified. Aldi One would would uh, would be an area to look at um, in that respect. Um, MT um, MT Two, you could um, uh, would be acceptable. On MT Three, um, I would uh, caution against M M Eleven, uh, given that it's um, uh, the, the 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 professional devices that that is not that is acceptable. Okay. Anything to add, Mrs. Evans? Uh, no, Chair. It was just to say, obviously, that um, the the drainage point has has been vociferous, vociferously uh, addressed by both the case officer and the lead development manager. And if you actually tried to uh, go for appeal on on the basis of of what Councillor Bowen put forward, you would be very hard pushed to defend that one at appeal. Okay. Thank you. Um, Right, we're going to go to the vote now. Um, we've got a, a motion uh, put by uh, Councillor Bowen and seconded by Councillor Johnson. Chair, can I just interject, if you don't mind? Can I just clarify, on the basis of what Mr Bishop has confirmed, can we go back to what Councillor um, Bowen put forward? He'd obviously said M2, M3, M11 of the NDP, that he was advised not to go against M11. Can we just clarify exactly which policies we are referring to so we have we have the proper reasons for refusal? Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. I will then um, withdraw M M11 and stick to M2, M3, LD1. Okay, we content with that, Mrs Evans? It was just Mr. Bishop said MT2 and oh, MT3. Sorry, it, it, yeah, so it's M, M, M2 and M3, sorry. M2 fine, M3. thank you. That's fine. I just wanted that clarification before you went to the vote, Chair. Thank you. Okay, fine. Thank you. So uh, hopefully all members are aware. Um, now we've got a proposal for refusal um, of this application, um, 201300. Land to the west of Ashdown House, Marden. Um, can I ask Democratic officers um, to confirm the number of eligible members to vote? Yes, Chair, there's 14 members eligible to vote. Right. Before you launch the, the vote, um, can I ask members, are you all content that you uh, heard all of the presentation and debate and that you're all eligible to vote? I believe that's the case. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Priest, thank you. So, for refusal, against refusal, or abstain, if you could um, vote now, please. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. We have six in favour to refuse, seven against, and one abstention. Right. Thank you. So that motion has failed. So I need uh, somebody to propose a counter recommendation, please. So Councillor Wilding. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I propose a deferral so that the um, applicant can come up with better designs that may be acceptable to uh, the uh, the people living around and uh, that we can agree uh, better reflect a truly sustainable development. If we are seconder for that proposal of deferment. Councillor Mill. Is that um, a second? I'm happy to second uh, Councillor Wilding's proposal for deferment on those grounds. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Evans, Mr. Bishop, are you content that we can go to the vote on a deferment? I've got nothing no, nothing to add, Chairman. If an, if an approval had been put forward, I would have put forward a recommendation for, for a rain harvesting condition to be added, but I, I've got nothing for, to, to mention on the... Uh, on the deferred, apart from uh, clarification as to the exact reason why 
the uh, application should be deferred so that the agent has got clear a clear steer as to what he needs to be looking to uh, to achieve. Right. Thank you. Uh, I believe Councillor Wilding did sort of infer the reasoning, but um, if, if you'd like to clarify, please, uh, Councillor Wilding. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'd like to see the um, alignment of the houses much better. I'd like to see the roofs. Uh, I dispute what uh, Mr Bishop said about um, they have to face south or southeast. I think um, that possibly depends on how many windows you have in that. Uh, it's obviously better for the solar panels. So I'd like to see a bit more research on that. I'd like to see the provision of shared car club section. Uh, I'd like to see um, a more sustainable, a truly, they, they said truly sustainable, but you know, my big bugbear all the time is the use of the word sustainable, qualifying it as truly sustainable when it obviously isn't. Um, I'd like to see it a, a really good example of low carbon, truly sustainable housing and probably limit it to three and make them lower. Thanks. Okay. Are you content with that, that reasoning, Mr. Bishop? I'll take that, I'll, I'll take that forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. Can I ask Democratic Office uh, if um, we are ready to go back to the vote? Um, I believe we've still got 14 members that are eligible to vote we do chair i think councillor fagan's um trying to interject there if, if, if she may right councillor fagan you need to use your blue hand please i i have used my blue hand chair. it's not it's not showing on my screen uh i could see it on mine sorry okay. um uh, j just to say that if, if we are going down this route, then could we please add uh, rainwater harvesting? I mean, I realise that there, there is um, the, you know, the drainage system in place, but actually I, I feel that where um, th there are issues around flooding, that rainwater harvesting would actually sort of help alleviate that. Is it possible to add that in? Mr Bishop? Yes, I don't see. I, I, I was going to recommend that as a condition anyway, so I don't see that as an issue. OK, fine. Thank you. So we, are we all clear on what we're voting for then? Deferment with, with the reasons as stated. Um, I believe we've got 14 eligible members still to vote. So uh, if I can ask uh, Democratic Services to uh, launch the vote, please. This is for deferment of this application either for, against, or abstain uh, with regards to deferment. <clears throat> okay, Chairman, all votes are in. We have five in favour, four deferment, seven against, and two abstentions. <laughs> so that one is lost as well. So we need a proposal then. From the chair, I will propose um, that this application is in, approved by a seconder, please. Councillor Fagan. Um, chair, yeah, can I please ask then that if, if it is approved that we put in the condition of the rainwater harvesting as one of the conditions to approval? Yeah, uh, Mr. Bishop has already mentioned that, that uh, that would be the case. Chair, I think uh, Councillor Owen seconded that one. Is that correct, Councillor Owen? Uh, okay, so that's uh, myself as chair and um, Councillor Owen to second. Um, before we go to the vote, uh, did you want to add anything, Mr Bishop? No, Chairman. No, I was just going to. Um, the, the 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 rainwater harvesting had come up during during the debate. I think it was raised by Councillor Fagan, um, and. Uh, had it uh, we've come now to a position where you, you've recommended it chairman and if that's acceptable then we can add that to the list of conditions thank you yes that's acceptable with me thank you and i'm sure that is with uh, councillor roan yes so again we go to the third vote then uh, this vote is for approval of this application as recommended by the uh, case officer um, so um, I believe we still got 14 eligible to vote. 
So you do indeed, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. So um, we've got four approval against or abstain. If you could all vote no, please. Thank you. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. Uh, six in favour to approve, six <laughs> against, and two <laughs> abstentions. <laughs> right. Well, I propose approval. Um, I've got the casting vote. I shall uh, obviously um, go in favour of this application. So this application is approved as recommended. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to call an adjournment for 10 minutes. Uh, so can I ask that the uh, recording... Right, thank you. We've uh, now gone live again. So... Um, uh, we now move up on to item seven on the agenda. Can I request that the public speakers for agenda seven, uh, attending as virtual attendees, Mr. Lees from uh, Marden Parish Council and Mrs. Uh, Kelly Saunders, the applicant's agent, are admitted to the meeting, please. Okay, Chair, they should be with us. Lovely. I think we've got them both. Yes. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Lees, and welcome, Ms. Saunders. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the meeting and call on you to speak following the officer's presentation on the application in due course. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second application this morning then, um, number 193. 227, land at White Gates Farm, Litmarsh, Hereford. Uh, proposed erection of two dwellings with garages. Um, officer presentation will be made by um, Mr. Wager and uh, the local ward councillor again is uh, Councillor Guthrie. So without further ado, um, I'll hand across to uh, Mr. Wager, please. Thank you, Chair. This presentation relates to la uh, land at Whitegates Farm, which is a modest farm on the fringes of the settlement of Litmarsh, which itself lies to the north of the village of Marden. The application site is indicated with a star on the map shown, and members will be aware of the context following the site visit on Monday. The proposed development is for the erection of two dwellings with garaging, and the application is made in outline form with only access and layout for consideration at this stage, with the other, the other matters being reserved for future consideration as the reserve matters. The development plan for the area is formed of both the Herefordshire Local Plan Course Strategy and the Marden Neighbourhood Development Plan, which was made in October 2016. It is also noted that Marden Parish Council are undertaking a review of the NDP and submitted their reviewed draft neighbourhood development plan to Herefordshire Council on the 26th of uh, November 2020, with the Regulation 14 consultation period running until the 15th of January 2021. The draft NDP may be attributed limited weight in the decision ma uh, making process at this time. Next slide, please. This slide shows the map of the settlement of Litmarsh with the application site denoted in red. The settlement boundary is indicated with a black line with the site of the proposed dwellings being outside the settlement boundary, though adjoining it, as members will note. The existing dwellings of Whitegate's farmhouse, Oak Ridge and Oak Acre, uh, Green Acre House may be seen just to the south of the proposed driveway. The Grade 2 um, listed building of Litmarsh Farm is indicated in dark blue, which lies uh, to the northeast of the application site. The application site is accessed off the public highway known as Litmarsh Road with a, visibility, with a proposed visibility display of 70 metres in each direction. Further, Litmarsh Road forms part of, the, of a bus route which serves the settlement as set out at paragraph 6.25 of the officer report. Next slide, please. This slide shows the existing block plan of the site, which includes a number of agricultural buildings. Members will be aware of the context of the site and the arrangements of the built form following the site visit on Monday. Next slide, please. The top left photo shows a view from Litmarsh Road looking northwest towards the existing dwellings and farm buildings, including the existing dwellings of Oak Ridge and Greenacre House. The bottom right photo shows a portion of the agricultural buildings which are to be removed as they are on the site of the proposed dwellings. Members will recall these from the site visit. Next slide, please. 
This slide shows the proposed site plan for the development, which identifies the access arrangements to the site, as well as the layout of the proposed dwellings. Given the outline nature of the application, this is the principal plan submitted as, as part of the proposed development. Litmarsh is identified as another settlement for growth under the core strategy policy RA2 and the NDP policy M2. However, the application site is noted to fall partially uh, outside of the settlement boundary for the um, for the settlement of Litmarsh, specifically whilst the access point from the public highway is within the settlement boundary, the proposed dwellings would be outside of the settlement boundary that were joining the boundary. As members will note from the officer report at paragraph 6.12, the NDP policy M2 identifies a number of criteria for residential development in designated hamlets, with the proposal being in conflict with criteria A, which seeks to only support new housing developments within settlement boundaries. This policy conflict is a matter to be weighed in the planning balance. However, in spatial terms, and notwithstanding the policy conflict, the settlement of Litmarsh is considered to be modest in size. However, in this case, two, uh, two dwellings is not considered to be harmful nor disproportionate to the settlement as a whole. Further, the relationship with the main built form of the settlement is a close one. The proposal is considered to be reflective of the density of development that is typical in the locale and is reflective of the scale and function of the settlement. Turning to consider the pattern of development and the character of the area, Litmarsh is nucleic in its form, clustering around Litmarsh Road and the junction to the north, with the development extending more than one plot uh, in places away from the public highway, such as residential dwellings immediately to the north of the application site, which can be seen on the site. With the approval of uh, two dwellings adjoining Whitegates Farm, uh, initiating a similar pattern of development on this site, which can be seen on the right hand side of the slide. The proposal would replace existing agricultural buildings and so would not be an entirely new visual protrusion away from the core of the settlement, though the site does not constitute previously developed land as it, its current use is agricultural. The proposal in terms of its relationship with the existing spatial character of residential development is considered to give rise to some limited harm, specifically in the manner in which the proposed dwellings would sit with the existing pattern of development in the locale, how, uh, giving rise to some tension with policy as noted in the officer report at paragraph 6.22. As is noted in the officer report, they're not considered to be uh, harm from an ecological highway safety or heritage standpoints with the proposal being acceptable in these regards. By way of a verbal update to members, the applicant has now submitted both a climate change and biodiversity checklist for the application. These indicate that the buildings will utilise thermally efficient materials, energy efficient heating systems, as well as the provision of solar and cycle storage. As this is an outline application, the details of climate change mitigation and adapt measures would be considered in detail at the reserve matters stage. However, it should be noted that the officer recommendation includes a condition securing the provision of at least one electrical vehicle charging point per dwelling, with the proposal being considered uh, to be wholly acceptable in these terms, having regard to both development plan policies and the Council's recent declaration of a climate and ecological emergency. To conclude, the application must be considered in the context of the Council's inability to demonstrate a five-year housing land supply. As such, the framework directs that the policies which are most important for determining the application are considered to be out of date, and so permission should be granted unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the framework as a whole. In this case, the most important policies for the decision are considered to include policies RA2 and RA3 of the core strategy, as well as policy M2 and M10 of the NDP. Accordingly, these policies are attributed to reduced weight in the planning balance. It is also noted at this stage that the provisions of paragraph 14 of the framework are not, not applicable as the NDP was made more than two years ago. The appraisal has identified some conflict with the provisions of the development plan with there being conflict with the spatial settlement boundary criteria A of the neighbourhood development plan policy M2, which results um, with uh, ensuing tension with policies RA2 and RA3 of the core strategy. This is considered to give rise to modest harm given the limited spatial discourse from the development plan. Further, officers consider there to be limited harm in the manner in which the proposed dwellings would sit with the existing pattern of development in the area, giving rise to some limited tensions with policy LD1 and RA2 of the core strategy and policies M2 and M10 of the neighbourhood development plan. However, turning to the planning balance, in terms of the benefits of the proposal, contributing to meeting the area's housing needs by providing um, dwellings in a sustainable location with good access to nearby services and facilities, 
in the context of the current shortfall in the county, county housing land supply. This is a significant benefit which affords weight in favour of the scheme. Thus, whilst moderate harm and limited harm has been identified, this is not considered to significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits of providing two dwellings in this instance when considered against the provisions of the framework as a whole and with the reduced weight attributed to the most important pl development plan policies. Therefore, on balance, the outline application is recommended for approval as per the recommendation set out in the officer report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wager. Uh, we now move across to um, our two public speakers. Um, I'd now like to invite Mr. Lees from uh, Baden Parish Council to uh, uh, make his comments, please. Thank you. You have three minutes. Can I first apologize for my rudeness last time? It was my first appearance and I was very nervous. So can I thank you, Mr. Chairman and the councillors for giving me this opportunity? No the, problem at all. I, I didn't think you were uh, rude in any fashion, Mr. Lee. So uh, in your own time, three minutes, please. The NDP made in October 2016 and is currently being reviewed and updated due to Herefordshire Council not meeting their five year land supply target. The NDP is currently in Regulation 14, consultation <coughs> for the review plan. Indicative targets set by Hereford Council for Marden for the made NDP was allocation for 60 dwellings. In fact, 95 were allocated in the plan and 50 more dwellings have actually been delivered. So 110 have been delivered. The current application, whilst well thought out, is outside the Lutmark settlement boundary. So is in non-conformity with Marden NDP policy M2, as it is in open countryside, it should be determined against core strategy policy. Both the made NDP and the review plan currently in regulation 14 have the aim to leave Motlip Marsh and the other small settlements without further development, other than windfall within agreed settlement boundary or as a single dwelling allocated in the review draft plan which will be within the settlement boundary once the plan is remade. The proposed development is not on the footprint of the barns being demolished, so is not a conversion windfall, which is in non-conformity with the Hereford core strategy, which is what it should be assessed against given it is outside the Marden um, development boundary. In summary, the Parish Council considers this application for two dwellings to be non-conformant with the Marden NDP and the Herefordshire Core Strategy. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Mr. Lees. Um, I now move across to uh, Ms. Saunders. Um, so you have three minutes in your own time, please. Thank you. Uh, you'll need to unmute yourself. There we are. Can you hear me now? We can, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, I'm talking on behalf of the applicants and uh, as a capacity, uh, as in my capacity as a neighbour of the affected site. Uh, my husband and I purchased our building plot uh, from the applicant in 2018 and we've built our home, which is Green Acres, which you've seen on the plan. So Mr Vickers' family have lived and farmed White Gates Farm for over 100 years. And over that period, farming's changed considerably small farming units are no longer viable and the need for all the associated agricultural barns and farm buildings no longer exists. This is evidenced around the country where farm diversification has occurred. Furthermore, only last week the UK unveiled its plans for the phasing out of farm subsidies post Brexit. Mr and Mrs Vickers' health has deteriorated in the last few years with Mr Vickers having two hip replacements and Mrs Vickers having a brain tumour. These illnesses have been understandably testing for the family. Uh, all of the properties within Lit Marsh are individual detached houses. Um, so the two new dwellings would be in keeping with the local area. The plot which is subject to the application is adjacent to the settlement boundary. Uh, there are two new properties built um, to the rear of White Gates, which is Oak Ridge and our property Greenacre House. The two proposed new dwellings would complete a small enclave of residential properties on what we consider to be a brownfield, wind full site. 
to all of the local residents of Lip Marsh in support of the scheme and would welcome the limited development of the area. We believe that the development is generally in accordance with uh, the NDP in particular, uh, M2 and M3. All the land drainage reports support our application and Ecology have also have no objections. Uh, there have been no objections from any relevant authorities and all local residents are in full support. In the light of this, we ask that you uh, give our site favourable consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms Saunders. Um, I'd now like to request that uh, our two virtual attendees leave the meeting and I'd like to remind you that you will be able to watch the live stream on the YouTube uh, Council's YouTube channel. So uh, thank you both very much indeed and uh, good day to you. Thank you. Right, uh, I now move across to uh, Councillor Guthrie. Um, as uh, previously stated, uh, Councillor Guthrie is not a member of this uh, committee um, and therefore doesn't get a vote, but uh, is entitled as Ward Councillor to open and close the debate. So in your own time, uh, Councillor Guthrie, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And once again, uh, thanks to the case officer for his report. And I'd like to thank all the members that were able to attend the site meeting, which was held on Monday. Um, clearly, this site is in quite close proximity to the previous application you've debated and made a decision on. So there are very similar issues and there is conflict with the modern neighbourhood development plan uh, as per the parish council have highlighted again. But there are very different elements to this application. No doubt members have uh, noticed that there is a high level of public representation. There is uh, a lot of uh, local support from residents for this application. It is on a site of old farm buildings within the Kirtledge of those buildings and um, it the access as we've heard from the officer is in part of the neighborhood development plan so the whole site um, is sort of like split really so you've got the access within the neighborhood development plan and the actual site just out of it um, it does propose more of a modest type of development with two houses, uh, more of a cluster type of arrangement. And if you have looked back on the planning history, there were two previous applications which have been approved on the same site. So members, I look forward to your debate and considerations on once more quite a difficult uh, discussion no doubt for you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Guthrie. Um, we now go into the debate proper and I'm looking for our first speaker, please. Who's going to be brave enough? Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I recall that um, you did uh, yourself, you asked the officer at the planning site visit, if somebody could tell us what the total size or acreage was of the holding, I'd be interested in that before we proceed, if anyone's got the, the numbers. Have you any further questions um, or comments to make before I go back to the officer? <clears throat> uh, none at this stage, Chairman, no. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Wager, please. I'm afraid, Chair, I don't have the the figure for the for the area of the farm holding um, to hand. I've asked I've asked the agent for the application, and, and they didn't know at the time of my of my asking. But um, I'm not sure if it's relevant to the consideration of this application for for two dwellings. Um, it'd be all I'd add. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Bowen. Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I trust I am unmuted. You are. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, again, we have the same conundrum, really. Uh, partly the drivers are within the neighborhood development plan, and the actual application site is outside it. Uh, so where do we go from there? 
do we give, what sort of weight do we give to it? And should we in fact say, well, it's close to, and therefore it's okay. Uh, or do we say, well, there's a, a line there and we should be, can, we should be acknowledging it. The other thing, of course, it, it, and I'm considering that, of course, uh, the other matter is this thing of farm buildings, etc., being technically greenfield sites, which is patent rubbish. You come across sites that are total concrete, like old uh, chicken sheds, and you get sites like this, which are partly concrete, partly, uh, well, diverse types of buildings, put it politely, um, which obviously aren't greenfield at all. And I think at some stage, the planning system needs to take into account what actually is brownfield and which actually is greenfield, if I may put that forward um, for discussion, not at this meeting, but at some other stage. We are at the moment tied into the fact that this is technically a, a, green, field, a, brown, a green field site, not a brownfield site. Um, I must say the, the present, I'm sure some good, decent houses there might improve the, the view of the place rather than uh, detract from it at the moment, because it is a very confused and um, fairly sort of rough farm at the moment. I may be polite about it uh, or rude about it. I'm not being trying to be rude about it at all, but it is a, shall we say, not a conventional uh, modern tidy farm in any way at all. And uh, farming has changed a lot and we should take these things into account as well. And uh, I believe the drainage system is, is more well, more practical and normal. Um, but I, I would look forward to hearing what other people have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, the site visit proved very interesting. And since in the previous application, we ignored a, a, a pe something being outside the settlement boundary, I feel we have to do so here. Clearly, the farm buildings are not in a good state of repair, uh, which probably reflects, uh, as, the, uh, as has been said, the poor health of the current farmers. And they're right in that farming is changing dramatically. So... To stop my wittering on, I will move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, have I a seconder to that proposal, please? Councillor Foxton. Um, I now move to uh, Councillor Fagan, please. Um, th thank you, Chair. Again, it, coming back to, to the NDP, and while I accept that it, it does have some weight, the weight is limited, uh, being that it's at um, Regulation 14, and I, th I think that that makes all the difference. If we're, if we're talking about neighbourhood planning, then, on, you know, it, it is a very short time scale, but unfortunately of two years that the plan is actually valid, but I, I'm afraid that we, you know, that's how it is, and we, we have to sort of face that and try and get our plans updated before they they lap so that um, they carry the weight that that communities would like them to have so uh, looking looking at the site I agree with councillor Bow and I I don't uh, I just <laughs> Obviously, it is a greenfield site, but it doesn't look like a greenfield site to me and, and that it can certainly be enhanced by uh, sensitive development. And I would hope that whatever development might come forward on this site, if this is agreed, that that would be a highly um, environmentally sensitive build. Um, and so, so that our communities can actually move forward uh, sustainably. I, I think one of the real advantages that Litmarsh has is that it does actually have a viable bus service at the moment and uh, that to me also makes a huge amount of difference because a lot of our communities where we're being asked for housing to be built doesn't have any public transport and um, so I probably will support this application. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Fagan. Uh, Councillor Selden please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, a question. Um, it was mentioned earlier that the uh, proposals, bearing in mind this is an outline application, the proposals of the buildings don't follow the existing footprint of the uh, 
agricultural buildings. Is that relevant in this application? Right. Can I ask Mr. Wager to uh, answer that or Mr. Bishop, if he wants to come in at this stage? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, you can see uh, paragraphs um, 1.2 and 1.3 of the officer report, the two, the two plans are included. Um, clearly, one of the sheds is on the site of, of the dwellings uh, and the stables that's indicated on the existing block plan also overlaps uh, with the proposed dwellings. There are other agricultural buildings that don't overlap, so not all agricultural buildings on the site do overlap, um, but the applications for the erection of, of two dwellings, and that's, that's what's being considered. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, sorry, John. Um, bear that in mind then, and noting that the um, the uh, supporter of the application was from one of the neighbouring buildings, I, I have no hesitation in, in supporting this application. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Seldon. Councillor James. Uh, uh, Councillor James, you're muted. I just warn against uh, looking at designating all agricultural buildings as brown as brownfield sites. We have a lot of uh, very large poultry units right out in the country, and if we did that as a as a policy, we might find little villages um, eventually uh, <laughs> arising within the within the countryside but that's that's for the future just to say that I, I support this particular application it's just a benefit to the local community and the immediate environment you know would we would you rather have two rather hopefully nice little little um, dwellings as opposed to agricultural buildings in the middle of, of a, a residential area so I think it's a win-win-win for the for the immediate uh, residents of that area so I shall support the application Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor James. Uh, Mr. Wager, you'd like to come in at that point? Yes, Chair. If I may, just, just as the brownfield land um, consideration seems to be coming up in discussions, um, I just refer members to paragraph 6.37 of the officer report, uh, which discusses brownfield land, uh, which is uh, uh, um, defined in the national planning policy framework um, as being previously developed land, which explicitly excludes uh, agricultural buildings from the definition. So the site is not brownfield land. And whilst I wouldn't necessarily go as far to describe it as greenfield uh, site, um, it's not it's not brownfield. Agefield, Chairman. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Mr. Wager, for that clarification. Um, Councillor Milne, please. Yes, well, you, you wouldn't... Um get to a, a planning committee meeting with my, my making some reference to historic environment uh, and I probably will make some on the next uh, application as well but um, I, I think um, crinkly tin sheds uh, are they historic they do have a certain vernacular a certain character in their own right and galvanized iron was as a material that's been around since the 1830s I would accept however though that um, as although that there is no heritage statement in in with this application uh, that, the, that a quick uh, reference to the map evidence shows that um, this, the, these farm buildings are all very contemporary. They're all within our own lifetimes. They're not, uh, they look old, they're not actually terribly old. And that uh, uh, a blink of an eye ago, this, this was an area of orcharding of, of sort of back, uh, backyards and field, uh, small, small paddock fields um, that, um, that have been colonized ad hoc by, by the farmer. I mean, one, one wonders uh, if uh, this application is approved that uh, in displacing these, uh, the, 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 the operation of the, the buildings, and they clearly are not redundant buildings, they, we could see uh, at the site meeting on Monday that they were very much in use, that, um, that, that we simply, simply find ourselves um, faced with a, an application with another steading somewhere else. Uh, close by that, um, uh, that 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 doesn't necessarily in itself enhance the the the, the character of the environment, but that's a, a, a matter for another day. Um, so I, I I would say that uh, I do look upon this as greenfield uh, very emphatically, and that the application site, the plan of it is like a little mushroom, isn't it? So it's not actually adjacent to the existing settlement site boundary; it is projected projects beyond it um, and that there is a gap 
uh, uh, between it and the, and the existing settlement boundary connected only by the lane. So um, in, in some respects, one, one needs to treat this as its own little mini settlement outside the settlement boundary. Uh, not even not even adjacent to it. It's not strictly speaking adjacent to it. So um, I've yet to make up my mind on how I'm going to vote, but I shall stop there. And if there's any further debate, I shall make up my mind shortly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Councillor Mill, Councillor Wilding, uh, followed by Councillor Johnson, please. Uh, th thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, whether it's green or brown or whatever beige colour it is. Uh, it's clearly um, got some buildings on it, and um, those buildings are in a sorry state of repair, so I can understand why they're not going to be using those footprints. I also felt that the, the buildings were occupied by uh, cattle, um, and uh, it didn't look like a, a very nice lifestyle for those cattle. And I also note that the government is suggesting that many farmers need to cut down on uh, their production of beef and, and stuff like that. So perhaps this would help with that. Um, the main thing I think though, is that I'd probably support this, but I would urge the applicants to make sure that when they present their, their actual designs, that they really truly are sustainable uh, with south facing roofs and all the other stuff and uh, that the applicants truly embrace the need to create buildings for the 21st century thanks thank you councillor wilding councillor johnson followed by councillor stone thank you chairman uh simply to uh, echo councillor james earlier comments <clears throat> conversion of these buildings, although outside uh, the settlement boundary, have uh, access which is within it. And uh, like Councillor James, I believe this would be an enhancement to the general area. Um, it doesn't have the sort of urban aspect that we looked at with the first application, and I will vote in favour of the, the, uh, the officer's report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Stone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think councillors Fagan and Roan made an important point about public transport. There is a bus service in the area, and this makes this application more sustainable. In addition, there's local support. Um, as has already been said, farming is changing, and the conversion of these dwellings in, does seem in keeping with the area, so I should be supporting this application. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stern. Just bear with me a moment. Uh, we've got no further speakers. Um, so before I go back to the uh, ward member, um, I'd ask Mr. Bishop um, or any other officers if they've got any uh, comments to make before we go back to the ward. So thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Members have picked up some very pertinent points uh, in relation to this application. Uh, very wise words, yet again, from Councillor Fagan regarding the NDPs and the need to bring them up to, um, uh, to, to certainly form part of the development plan. Obviously, Marden are doing that. Uh, um, they are progressing that now, but not, not uh, um, unfortunately, to a pace where we can, uh, we can only apply limited weight at the present time to that, to that plan. Um, uh, Councillor Sardin raised about the foot about the footprint. The new dwellings don't need to be on the footprint. But what you would what you would view from that perspective is the impact that those existing buildings have on the landscape, and it gives you an impression as to what any new dwelling could potentially have within the within the local landscape area. The the officer has, has clearly identified the issue on the brownfield land. There is a definition of brownfield land, which specifically excludes agricultural agricultural buildings, etc., uh, which um, would, uh, if it did, would obviously uh, encourage an urban sprawl into into the open countryside if they if they were included. That's um, essentially why they were removed. What, what, sorry, why it was removed. Um, finally, on the design, yes, I, I, I'm sure the um, the applicant and the uh, supporter are listening to this debate, and uh, uh, they'll be um, seeking to come forward with a, an appropriate design with safe facing roofs etc i see i see the from the indicative layout plan one has got a south facing roof the other one runs uh, no, 
northwest, east, east uh, southeast, and obviously that, but that would be easy enough to turn around with an appropriate design and take in the the solar gain, which could be achieved a, accordingly f through through the south facing or southwest east facing uh, uh, orientation of the buildings. So, all in all, Chairman, uh, a good debate picking up on all the points. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. <clears throat> Right. Uh, before we go to the vote, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor uh, Guthrie, uh, if you'd like to make some closing remarks, please. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. And thank you for taking all the matters into consideration when uh, considering this application. Actually, I do not have anything further to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Guthrie. Um, now, I need to ask members if they um, all believe that they are eligible to vote. Um, I've been made aware that, uh, Councillor James, we lost you for between one and two minutes. Um, is that the case or, or did you or were you able to uh, hear all the debate and, and officer report? Chairman, I, I was able to hear. I caught the missed just about, I should think, about 30 seconds of the end of Councillor Milne's statement but otherwise i saw and heard everything okay fine thank you uh Kent, uh mrs evans are you content with that yes chair that's fine as i say as long as the case officers report was heard all of the public speakers were heard and the majority of the debate um that i i can't see that so there's any anything that would preclude councillor james from voting on this application okay thank you and i understand that all other members um were uh, present for the for the whole of the debate and the presentation. So can I ask Democratic Services um, if the electronic voting system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible voting committee members, please? Uh, yes, Chair, we still have 14 members eligible to vote. Okay, thank you. So the uh, proposal is for approval of this application at uh, land at Whitegates Farm, Litmarsh. Uh, proposed by uh, Councillor Polly Andrews and seconded by Councillor Foxton um, of the poll in front of you now for approval against or abstain. So you can all make your um, vote now and press the submit button, please. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. We have 13 members voting for and one abstention. Okay, one at abstention. So that um, is approved as per officer recommendation. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, we now move straight on to the third application today, um, which is um, item eight on the agenda, uh, 201738, uh, the buildings at Tadordi, uh, Nature Reserve, uh, Land Grove, Ross and Wye, Herefordshire proposed development of the uh, conversion of two small redundant barns into a luxury six to eight person holiday let. Um, we have three speakers that have registered to speak. Uh, can I request that they're all admitted to um, the um, meeting, please? Okay. So I believe... Sorry. They're all present. Okay. Thank you. So uh, welcome uh, this morning to uh, Mr. Lodge, Mr. Leister and uh, Mr. Hitchcock, um, who will be invited to uh, speak following the officer's rec uh, presentation. Um, this application is being presented by um, Elsie um, Morgan and the ward councillor for this application is uh, Councillor Swinglehurst. Councillor Swinglehurst is not a member of this committee and therefore doesn't get a vote, but she's entitled to open and close the debate. So um, over to um, Elsie uh, Morgan, please, for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. This application relates to a site located on the southwest edge of the established residential village Lang Grove. This is indicated by the Red Star. The site is within the Herefordshire Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve with a total of 28 acres in the Trattori Farm. 
uh, policy context is laid out in section two of the officer report. Next slide, please. This application seeks permission for the conversion and ad adaptation of the disused buildings into a holiday let for six to eight people. This would include the construction of a glazed link between the structures and the raising of the roof by approximately eight centimetres in total with a glazing of a gap of 40 centimetres. The lower barn would utilise a green roof, the specification of which is included in the supporting documents. Next slide, please. Internally, this will comprise three bedrooms, two bathrooms, living room and kitchen and dining room. Um, sorry, I've just noticed that I think that slide's wrong. Um, can I just see the next one? Yes, my apologies, I must have said not enough there. Um, so internally, this will comprise three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room and kitchen dining room. The holiday let would utilise a single storey with a first floor bedroom element to the southwest of the building, as shown in the bottom right of the slide. Next slide, please. At local level, policy RA6 of the core strategy lends support to proposals which diversify the rural economy, including small scale extension of existing businesses and promoting sustainable tourism proposals of an appropriate scale in accordance with policy E4 tourism. It makes clear that the proposal should be of a scale appropriate for their location and setting, in this instance a fringe residential area, and would not cause unacceptable levels of travel or harm to amenity of neighbours. The policy states that the tourist industry will be supported by a number of measures, which include new accommodation throughout the county, which help to diversify and extend the tourist provision, increasing the number of overnight visitors. In this instance, the long term income opportunity would facilitate the upkeep of the Wildlife Trust, whilst encouraging spending in Langrove where possible and surrounding areas within Herefordshire economy. Objective nine of the core strategy seeks pursuit of sustainable tourism opportunities, which is pertinent via policy RA3, Herefordshire's countryside, whereby the sustainable reuse of redundant or disused buildings will be supported where it complies with RA5 and leads to an enhancement of the immediate setting. As such, it can be concluded that the principle of development is supported by local and national policy, given it would provide long-term viable use for an existing disused building to aid tourism industry. Next slide, please. As confirmed by the structural report submitted with the application, the buildings are suitable for conversion without requiring major or complete reconstruction. Through consultation with building control, it has been confirmed that the report completed by a qualified structural engineer is accepted and considered in relation to this application. The existing stone buildings would retain their form with necessary repair works detailed within the report. It is recognised that the additional work is required to secure the proposed use. However, the introduction of a glazed link with raised roof would read clearly as a later addition and would not be considered substantial extension. It's appreciated that the scheme may push the boundaries of policy RA5 of what would be expected in the case of a dwelling house, for example. In this instance, positive planning balance is engaged and the social and economic benefit to be derived from a tourist endeavour would outweigh the proposed additional works, given that they would enhance the existing building. Although not of any designated heritage significance, the repurposing would provide an enhanced viable option for the building's conservation, making effective use of redundant buildings which do not positively contribute to the site as a whole. Next slide, please. Although the scheme would alter the existing appearance, it would retain the essential character of the buildings with existing openings retained to form glazed windows and doors. The proposed glazed link between the buildings would extend the gap of 2.7 metres, sitting below the eaves height of the barns, therefore remaining subservient and retaining the character of the void space at present. Given the location of the link and the minimal height increase, it is not considered that the additions would cause harm to the appearance of the building or wider landscape setting, clearly differentiating between existing structure and later addition. As previously mentioned, although of no particular heritage significance, the historic building officer has offered no objection, confirming that it is a sympathetic conversion, retaining and respecting the existing character. Suggested conditions are included to protect the existing structure and ensure appropriate repair work is undertaken. Next slide, please. As highlighted in paragraph 6.13 of the report, any proposal would increase the current levels of use and movement to and from the sites as the barns are currently unused. 
Given the scale of the proposal and the wider residential context, it is not considered that the increased use of the site of a maximum of eight occupants as conditioned would present a detrimental increase in noise to warrant refusal. The Environmental Health Officer for Noise and Nuisance has raised no objections to the scheme with suggested conditions including restriction on amplified music and no outdoor overnight stay are used to protect amenity and the wider rural setting. Given the single storey nature of the majority of the proposal, the additional raised roof glazing is not considered to impact upon residential amenity with regards to overlooking. Furthermore, the first floor element elevation fronting Trattori Farm, approximately 25 metres to the site, south, measures at 191 centimetres from floor to glazing. Given the existing dwellings to this side of the valley, as indicated in the top right image, the proposal site is shown by the red star, the increase of one residential unit is not considered to increase light spillage to a detrimental level with external lighting restricted through condition. Next slide, please. At paragraph 109 of the MPPF, it states that the development should only be prevented or refused on highways grounds if there would be an unacceptable impact on highway safety or the cumulative impact on the road network would be severe. Policy MT1 of the core strategy is reflective of this. The area engineer has offered no objection to the scheme with the access road currently an existing arrangement to serve another residential unit. The parking offered at the top of the site is considered to be acceptable with condition included to ensure proper consolidation, surfacing and drainage. The restriction of occupancy through condition uh, to a maximum of eight at any one time ensures movement to and from the site would not create a severe impact upon the highway safety or network, therefore not warranting refusal in accordance with the MPPF. A secure cycle parking is also conditioned. Next slide, please. Though additional landscaping is limited, this is appropriate in assuring that uh, the site does not read as an overly engineered or domesticated in its design and setting, and it remains to be read as an agricultural in character. The scheme would reduce visual impact upon the landscape through the use of a green roof to the lower barn. The proposal has been and assessed by the council's ecologist and a habitats regulation assessment undertaken. This concluded that mitigation against any likely significant effect on the special area of conservation is achievable and conditioned. This was sent to Natural England who concur, offering no objections to the proposal. Therefore, the scheme is compliant with LD2, SD4 and RA5 as it will not have a detrimental ecological impact. The proposal confirms the use of sustainable drainage systems using soakaways with permeable paving for driveways. Testing has been undertaken to show these systems are achievable and no objection is raised by land drainage. Conditions are included to secure final drainage details and the proposal is therefore compliant in foul water terms in accordance with SD4. As noted in the updates, the climate change and ecology checklists have been completed. The proposal seeks to include a number of features to help tackle the climate and the ecological emergency, including thermally efficient materials, energy efficient heating systems with opportunity for further sustainable elements in future. Next slide, please. The existing barns are constructed over a small portion of the public right of way footpath, which is identified by the Prow and Ramblers Association consultation responses. Prow have raised no objection to the scheme and given the significant amount of time the barns have been in this position with the proposal not encroaching any further upon the right, right of way, this issue would not warrant refusal. Any other matters raised through consultations have been addressed in the officer's report at paragraph 6.23 and 6.24. Um, for ease of understanding, the concerns regarding the will of the previous landover is not a material planning consideration and is not assessed and the access rights over the adjacent property is a civil matter and therefore not a planning consideration. Next slide please. To conclude, the principle of development is shown to be acceptable and in accordance with policies E4, RA3, RA5 and RA6 of the core strategy, which support the viable and sustainable reuse of rural buildings for the purpose of tourism, while sustaining and diversifying the rural economy. Therefore, in accordance with the thread of presumption in favour of sustainable development, which runs through the MPPF, the proposal does not conflict with the policies of the local plan and poses no material considerations to indicate the refusal of the scheme. Thank you. Right, thank you, uh, Miss Morgan. Um, if we can stop the sh screen sharing, fine, thank you. Um, we have three speakers um, on, on this application, um, and I now invite Mr Lodge 
um, to uh, speak first, and uh, you have three minutes in your own time, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Langaran Parish Council very strongly objects to this proposed planning application. Neither the Parish Council nor local residents were consulted prior to this application, despite assertions to the contrary. The concept of a luxury holiday let is actually at odds with the aims of a wildlife trust inside a nature reserve and is against policy RA5 of the core strategy. Policy RA5 also does not lend support to rebuilding rural structures that have fallen into a derelict state. We believe this is the case with this application. The nature reserve is certainly not an established tourist attraction. On a day-to-day -day basis, it is in fact closed to the public. The case officer's report on this aspect is incorrect. There are already many small Airbnbs in Langrove and converting these two derelict structures into a luxury home for eight, possibly even 16, is incompatible with the needs of the local area. Holiday makers will inevitably disturb the peace in this tranquil valley, which also at night will affect all neighbouring properties and is against policy RA5. Tratordi Farmhouse, which will be overlooked by this property and visitors, would encroach on the privacy of the family who live there. The case officer's report is also incorrect on this aspect. There is no public transport to support this application. All visitors need to come by car, which is in conflict with policy MT1. The local roads are now very busy and biking in this area is extremely challenging, all contributing to genuine safety concerns that we have. Site access is a serious concern. And I think you saw this yesterday or on Monday. There is insufficient space to park three to four visitor vehicles, let alone vehicles being used by contractors and vehicles belonging to volunteers. There is no direct access to the property which would severely hinder the construction phase as well. The proposal does not support policy E1, employment provision, or policy RA6, the rural economy. The applicant's estimated contribution to the local economy is overinflated. Langrove has taken a huge proportion of new housing allocated under the NDP process and is burdened by almost 50 new houses with 27 yet to be completed. Increased uh, increase in traffic will inevitably have a severe impact on road safety in the area. It's also worth noting that local opposition is very strong and heartfelt and over 900 people have signed an online petition against this application. Langaran Parish Council respectfully asked the committee to reject this unwelcome and controversial application. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lodge. Uh, I now move across to uh, Mr. Leicester. Um, you have three minutes in your own time, please. You'll need to unmute yourself, Mr. Leicester. Bottom left of your screen normally. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've lived next to Tratordi Farm for 25 years and I've been asked to represent the views of people close to Tratordi and in Langrove generally who object to this application. There was strong general support in the parish for the aims of Herefordshire Wildlife Trust. And when they were given to Tordy Farm, many of us joined the trust in support, but we are shocked by this proposal, which we believe directly undermines these aims. Contrary to the statement made in the application, no consultation of any kind has been carried out in the community. These derelict stone sheds are in direct line of sight of numerous other properties. Tratordi Farmhouse in particular is only 21 metres away and is directly overlooked by the proposed glazing. Recycling and general waste are collected on alternate Mondays in Langrove and have to be taken to a junction in the village 100 yards away. It's unclear how this might be effectively managed to avoid the risk of uncollected waste attracting vermin. The venue will be marketed by Canopy and Stars, the company who specialise in remote and secluded locations. This is likely to enhance the sense in holidaymakers that they need not worry about disturbing others, but this location, while remote, is not isolated. Herefordshire Wildlife Trust maintain that they will be seeking family groups, which can certainly be noisy, but such locations are also sought out by groups of friends for short stays and celebrations. The proposed accommodation is for six to eight people, 
but it will be unsupervised by any staff on or near the site and could easily be exploited by larger groups for which the parking and very restricted access is wholly inadequate. With limited indoor space, good weather is likely to bring continual holiday noise and disturbance outside, and this will significantly affect neighbours, but it would also disturb the wildlife of the nature reserve. This is not an imaginary concern. Herefordshire Wildlife Trust have themselves been forced to close their site at Bodenham Lake Nature Reserve at night because of disturbance and antisocial behaviour by visitors who ignored signs and warnings. And the last point, Tritordi Farm lies in an exceptionally quiet valley, dark at night and without a road through it, and it was this character which led to it being entrusted to the care of Herefordshire Wildlife Trust by the late Eileen Cook. This venture is of no commercial value to the surrounding community. The reserve is not a tourist attraction in any sense. Indeed, there is no public access to it other than a single footpath. These buildings would be far better employed and would contribute far more to the understanding of the natural world if, as originally promised by Herefordshire Wildlife Trust, they were used for guided nature education. The local community would actively support this and has therefore submitted an alternative planning application in pursuit of this aim. I urge the committee to refuse the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leister. Um, I now move across to uh, Mr. Hitchcock, who is um, yeah, uh, representing the applicants. So um, thank you, Mr. Hitchcock. Three minutes in your own time. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, everybody, um, for this opportunity to speak. Herefordshire Wildlife Trust welcome the positive responses from officers that have been put forward as part of this planning consultation. And we welcome the conditions to address the objections raised including limitations on the number of occupants and cars. It will be an essential part of our booking process for guests to register full details so groups can be screened. We will make it clear as part of the booking and advertising that this is family accommodation and that stag and hen parties are not allowed due to the development's location. This is a restriction that around 45% of Canopy and Stars accommodation providers successfully apply. We have listened to concerns about the access track um, and want to make clear that we will not allow the cars of guests to drive down the track, that we do have that legal right of access. Guests will park at the top of the track in marked out spaces so as not to block any access to the bungalow or farmhouse holiday home. Cars will be limited to two per booking and this will be made clear in all communications. We would like to draw attention to the comments within the Heritage Assessment Survey that we have followed English heritage best practice advice in the design proposals, maintaining and enhancing features of interest. We believe that this is a design of an appropriate scale and nature for its location. The building is presented as a design that will be enhanced in terms of energy sustainability once permission is granted and as additional funding allows, though we would like to note that the clear story windows improve solar gain. We currently have a funding offer for the creation of an integrated wetland to manage wastewater. This would be submitted as a separate application on receipt of permission and would greatly enhance the lowest biodiversity interest meadow. In 2020, we have strewn wildflower seed from our parks nature reserve across two fields to begin the significant restoration of the meadows to a more flower rich sward. We will also plant new hedgerows, allow scrub to flourish and are even rewilding the top field. A green roof planted with native wildflowers perfectly complements the meadows and adds to the story and take home Monday morning memories for our visitors. With regard to the scale of the development, the buildings and track account for less than half an acre of this 28 acre site. The access to and use of these buildings will have little impact on the restoration and enhancement of the grassland, but the income generated will help the Trust carry out its mission to restore Herefordshire's wildlife and engage people with the natural world. Some 75% of Herefordshire Wildlife Trust membership is over the age of 65, where the average age of bookings of this nature are in their 30s. We believe that this is a fantastic opportunity to show the work of Herefordshire's conservation movement for supporting the local economy and overnight stay opportunities in our beautiful county. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hitchcock. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to... Um, now request that our uh, three virtual attendees leave the meeting. 
And I'd like to remind them that they can watch the live stream of the meeting on the Council's YouTube channel. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all very much for your input this morning and uh, a good day to you all. Thank you. Right. Um, I now move across to uh, Councillor Swinglehurst, um, who, as I've already stated, is not a member of this committee, but uh, is entitled as ward member to open and close the debate. So in your own time, please, Councillor Swinglehurst. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman, and thank you to those members who uh, came on the site visit on Monday. Um, so on the face of it, the conversion of two small barns to holiday lets seems to be a modest enough application, yet it has elicited over 80 letters of objection. And I'm a member of Herefordshire Wildlife Trust, as are many of the objectors. Um, we look to the trust to protect and enhance the natural wildlife flora and fauna of the county. They're a wholly admirable organisation in so very many ways. So it's ironic that the trust themselves are the applicant here and the planning balance is whether or not the economic gain is worth the environmental cost. So to those brave members who came on the site visit, I can only say well done. Well done for finding the site and for navigating the track down to it. I don't think I need to dwell too long on the problems of the local road network, its ability to accommodate increased traffic, the suitability of the parking and turning arrangements, the likely problems as holiday makers unfamiliar with the road turn up in small sports cars or attempt the hill after a snow or a frost. Well, it'll be fun, uh, but not in a good way. A holiday let with eight occupants needs more car parking spaces, I'm afraid. It's just reality. Since the barns cannot be accessed in any other way than by private car, we cannot assume that the occupants will all be related and travel together. It may be a group of friends, sets of couples, it might be four cars, five, six. Also, the area specified is also used by volunteers and workers. So there's every likelihood that multiple vehicles will all be trying to park on the same small patch of ground. And then is, is it not possible that they will spill out onto that very narrow lane where there's already cars parked halfway up the pavement? The application suggests that there's a bus service and public transport is a realistic alternative to car use. That is not so. There is a bus once a week. So it's not really much use for tourists to get out and about to see the local sites. There's not enough to comply with the need for sustainable transport options. Objectors also raise the issue of emergency vehicle access and indeed delivery vans. Those who came on the site will know the lane is extremely narrow and unless the bank of earth on the side of the, the upper barn is removed, there's no way to get a vehicle to the property without trespassing on the adjacent land holding. And if the, if the bank of earth was removed, then probably uh, that, that upper barn would, would collapse. So I believe that these considerations put the application into conflict with MT1 and MPPF paragraph 108 by way of impact on the local road network and no realistic alternative to car use. The conversion of rural buildings such as these is covered in policy RA5 of the core strategy and HOU3 of the NDP, which is uh, Reg 14. Uh, but these policies make it clear that permission would not be forthcoming if the scale of works required are considered to be major. In other words, the buildings have to be capable of conversion without major reconstruction. Local objectors have taken the time, trouble and expense to get a professional opinion on the suitability of the structure for conversion. And the surveyor, Kevin Toombs, FRICS, concluded that the building showed signs of severe structural weaknesses and that conversion would involve major works. He noted, and I'm quoting, evidence of settlement and subsidence, also deflection of structural walls in both buildings. Since barns of this type rarely have any sort of footings or foundations is hardly to be wondered at, but it does beg the question as to the scope of the works that will be required to use them for the intended purpose. Mr. Toombs believes that the walls will require underpinning, the building is in such a poor state of repair as to be dangerous and major building works are inevitable. Those members who came on the site visit will have their own views on this. There is no disagreement that substantial works of some sort are going to be required to make the structures fit and safe for conversion, but the applicant has not provided the detail as to the extent of these works. There's also very real possibility, supported by the commissioned report from Mr. Toombs, 
that the scope of the works required will conflict with core strategy RA5, which is the policy upon which the application rests. There is an argument that RA5 notwithstanding, this application represents an uplift to the local economy. Landgrove has a pub and a milk shed with fantastic milk. So there is limited potential to support the local economy. Most Langrovians will shop in the nearest town, so there could be some benefit to the Herefordshire economy there if the town were not in Wales. The economic benefit will be, to my mind, de minimis and should not be overemphasised. Impact on residential amenity of the neighbouring property. The nearest property has a somewhat unusual feature in that in order to get to the bathroom, the occupants have to traverse the rear of the house outside. This can be clearly seen from the site and would impact the privacy of the residents concerned. There would also be a degree of overlooking since the development site is on higher land. Both privacy and overlooking are material considerations. I'm pleased to note the conditions around music outdoors, but I have concerns around how we are planning to monitor and enforce such condition. Are we relying on the neighbours to be the killjoys week in, week out? The same would apply to the limit on numbers. The environmental health officer references the plan proposal for up to 16 occupants, and we're conditioning it for eight, but I have no idea how we would enforce that. The application is within the lower YSAC catchment, and therefore an HRA applies, as there would be likely significant adverse effects to the SAC. The drainage detail, which is yet to be forthcoming, is subject to a condition and the adverse effects are set aside. Although the full details are not known, the principle is outlined and the foul water arrangements are not in accordance with the normal order of preference from the main sewer to cesspit. No reason is given for the proposed septic tank and soakaway rather than a PTP. And I would have hoped for some form of wetland and I gather that if there's funding that that might be uh, coming forward. But the, and the proposal has aspirations to meet some of the climate change checklist targets like renewable heating, solar light, electric car charging points, so forth, but it's dependent on successful grant applications. So it doesn't form part of this application and can't be relied upon. Uh, likewise, the biodiversity net gain, there is no site specific plan, which given the sensitivity of this location is an omission, as is the lack of a biodiversity enhancement plan. The glass areas, will look very grand designs, but they will also introduce a lot of light into a dark place, and no thought has been given to this by the applicant. There's been a lot of anger about what local feel is the betrayal of the intentions of Mrs Cook's will. The village would rather see something like an education centre, and they've even drawn up plans to that end. They accepted the sale of the farmhouse by the trust, but they don't want to see the commercial exploitation of the site. The applicant paints a picture of an ongoing tourist attraction. Locals say no one visits the site apart from the volunteer workers and one organized visit last year. Access is restricted to the public right of way and the site is therefore a tranquil natural oasis, which is how they feel it should remain. I'm therefore asking you to refuse this application due to non-compliance with policies RA5, LD2, subsection C, development that would be liable to harm the nature conservation value of a site or species of local nature conservation interest, an empty one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Swinglehurst. Uh, we now go into the debate proper, and I have three indicating uh, they wish to speak, uh, starting with Councillor Roan, followed by Councillor Bowen, followed by Councillor Milne. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can we have some um, clarity on how many people this uh, place would intend holding? Because in, in the docs, it says six to eight. Um, we've heard the ward member and one of the speakers say up to 16. I think it, it's, it's easy to say, how many, uh, could somebody just remind me, or I don't know if we can have a look at the, the um, plans again. How many bathrooms has it got? Right, can I, uh, can I ask um, Miss Morgan to um, actually clarify, please? Yes, no problem. So that it's three bedrooms, two bathroom, and it's intended six to eight. And a condition has been included to limit the occupancy to eight people at any one time. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, I'm going to sit and listen to what my uh, colleagues have got to say. The only thing I will observe about this sort of uh, 
uh, accommodation and bearing in mind the local services that the intended family who or group that are going to turn up at Friday tea time will have a delivery booked by a supermarket and along comes everything they need for the weekend, the drinks, the salmon, the croissants, the lovely cheeses, the beautiful lamb chops. It will all turn up and they will jump in their cars, go off to see what it is they're going to do. They will not shop locally unless it's for a pint of milk or something like that. It really is overstated that it will bring uh, some sort of economic boost to the area. I'm also a little bit concerned that somebody left this in their will or donated it to this um, this group and uh, it's going to be used in this way. I, I really don't see, I mean, it. That's that may be something for the uh, the um, uh, person who um, made it available or their estate should have really dealt with it. But it does make me a little bit uncomfortable that it should be go this way. However, saying that tourism at home is going to be a big, big thing. This is a growth area. And if they're going to visit somewhere, I would very much like people to visit here. So I listened to what my colleagues got to say. Okay, thank you, Councillor Rowan. Councillor Bowen, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think very interesting remarks by both the Parish Council Chairman and our local ward member. And I think we ought to take those on board in a very serious fashion too. Uh, I, I made a visit there yesterday. Uh, the track going down actually into the, uh, uh, into the site, uh, shall we say, is a bit more like climbing Everest coming out of it and descending uh, Nanga Parbat going in, um, both tricky operations. Uh, it is very narrow, and it, if you did take away the bank that supports the foundation, well, the base of the stable block, uh, I think you'd have serious damage done. Um, the whole concept of rebuilding that is going to be very tricky, I think. Um, and also, I think the drainage, if it is um, a cesspit, you will need to get access to clear it out from time to time. I don't know quite how, how you're going to get down to it. Um, and are you going to take electric cables up for charging points up the car park from that particular site? Well, you could do, but I think it's a very limited car parking in every way. It is in so many ways uh, a tricky, tricky site indeed, both to access, um, both from far and near. And I think the disturbance and the possibility of overlooking, et cetera, et cetera, all uh, they all weigh heavily against approving this application. And the, the stable block, it's hardly a barn, it's more a stable block or a buyer. Uh, you can hardly give the, the dignity of a barn, I think. And the other building, those got interesting stonework, is more a, a very small barn or a big buyer. And has, as uh, Councillor Swinglehurst has pointed out, via the, the the surveyor, it has serious uh, problems with its structure. All in all, I, I would certainly recommend refusal of this application. There are too many things against it to make it worthwhile. There's the lack of the, 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 the proposed amount of economic benefit to the locality is very limited, I think. And the dangers and difficulties of the whole project are, well, be far better applied to some sort of um, educational site where you could take advantage of the uh, quiet rusticity of the whole area and not destroy the peace and quiet that is there now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bowen. So that's a proposal for refusal, contrary to officer recommendation. The Vice Minister, yes. please. No, nobody, oh, Councillor Wilding, seconding that. I now move on to uh, Councillor Milne, please. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, question for um, the case officer, please. Um, we've got two planning applications running in parallel for this this site. Uh, we've only <coughs> been asked to look at look at uh, 201738 today. However, 202544, which was due to have been determined on the 11th of November, has not been mentioned at all. 
Uh, this is the application for a, a more modest scheme of, uh, of repair, adaptation, conversion to a learning educational center. Um, can I? Can we have a comment, please, on on that, on the status of that? Why we've not been not that this is not um, not been asked to look at that at the moment. It's obviously. I'm going to ask. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Kames and Milne. I'm going to ask Mr. Bishop to uh, comment, but I think I know what the answer to to that will be. Uh, <clears throat> we must determine the application as we have in front of us on its merits. It's not a beauty contest. One one against the other. Um, the other application will come forward in due course. Obviously, our officers have got a lot of applications they're processing at the present time. Um, but it, as I say, it's not a beauty contest. You must consider this application on its own merits. Right, thank you, Mr. Bishop. That confirms my thoughts. Uh, did you want to add anything, Councillor Mill? Um, uh, uh, not on that subject, but I'd, if, if I may use the rest of my three minutes to talk about the historic interest of the place, I Certainly. will. It's um, it's a bank barn we looked at on Monday. Uh, a, a, an interesting configuration of buildings, very, tr very traditional, a char quite characteristic of Cumbria and parts of the Pennines and Devon, whereby you have a small um, fodder barn with a threshing bay. Uh, and underneath, curiously, this space where animals were kept, and it's quite a quite an uncommon uh, traditional farm form for Herefordshire. It only really works obviously where you've got a steep bank to build these things in, but the the idea is, um, is probably 17th century in origin, very difficult to date this building, but it could conceivably be, a, be as old as that, could, could be two, 250 odd years old. Um, we sadly lack its roof, which would give, give us the real clues to its date but it is nonetheless an interesting building although I recognize that it is undesignated um, the, um, the, the, the so I give I give significant weight to how the applicant has addressed the repair and adaptation of, of the building in my consideration I'm going I'm, I'm going to stop there because I'm not going to uh, again I'm, I'm going to defer my decision on how I vote until I've heard more of the debate, but um, uh, I, I would ask fellow members to consider the historic interest of the site. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Milne. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Thank you, Chairman. I must say the site visit on Monday was extremely interesting. As has been already mentioned, there was a very steep access, steep and narrow access road, which I think will present problems for anyone with mobility problems getting up and down and even so up. The building itself, well, I look at 6.10, which says it, the buildings are suitable for conversion without requiring substantial rebuilding. Well, looking at the condition of them, I must disagree on that. I think to put the proposed designs that have been shown to us in place would require very substantial rebuilding. And as already been mentioned, the difficulties of getting the necessary materials and equipment down this narrow drive would be a builder's nightmare, I feel. Um, I really, whilst I would like to see better use made of these rather, rather sad buildings at the moment, I cannot honestly feel that the prospect of turning this into luxury accommodation is at all practical. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Andrews. Um, now turn to uh, Councillor Millmore, followed by Councillor Wilding. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, obviously, I was not at the site meeting yesterday, but having listened to the descriptions of the access, um, I'm asking the question, how would emergency services get to say someone who uh, a holiday maker who maybe had a heart attack or something um, would it just be the air ambulance that be uh, only be able to get there um, so it seems to me that uh, emergency services would not be able to get access easily to this site could uh, i have an answer to that question please um miss morgan perhaps you'd like to uh, respond please Thank you, Chair. I don't think I could comment on the exact particulars of um, what 
um, emergency services could get down there, but it's an existing arrangement. It already serves one residential um, dwelling. Um, it, it would be an increase of use of the site, but not to a detrimental um, level, as has been confirmed by the area engineer. Um, and the parking is also proposed at the top of the access, which is where the cars would be left. So there wouldn't be a need to bring them down to the bottom of the site. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Morgan. So can I just come back on that, please? You can. Yeah. So what you're saying then is uh, the um, uh, an ambulance or something like that would be unable to reach that site easily. Uh, my you're you're muted, you're chairman. muted chairman. Sorry. Uh, my understanding would be that the uh, ambulance would uh, be able to get to the parking area and um, they, uh, they'd they be about 100 yards away from the actual uh, property itself. Um, as Miss Morgan stated, there is a property further down the lane, uh, the farmhouse. Um, so, um, you know, we'd be in a similar situation with regards to an emergency vehicle for that uh, dwelling as well. Did you want to add anything uh, more, Mr. Mill, uh, Councillor Millmore? No, thank you. That's uh, all I need to ask. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilding, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, God, I'd like to live here. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Oh, God, I'd love to be there and to be out in that little yard out by the buildings there and have me cheese and stuff that Councillor Roan suggested I could get down there and have a nice bottle of wine and uh, put on the clash as loud as possible so that it echoed around the valley and um, get out my spotlights and look for badgers. Oh, that would that would be good. Um, I really would like it, but I, I'm not going to be supporting this and that is reflected in uh, uh, me wishing to... Um, uh, to second uh, Councillor Swinglehurst's thing. Access is not a problem because you just say you can't get here if you've got access problems. Uh, so you wouldn't have access problems. Uh, the emergency vehicles, I think they'd get down there okay. I'm not sure how they'd get back. <laughs> so you'd end up with about 12 fire engines down there by the end of the century, I imagine. Um, I do agree, substantial building would be needed to make that safe. I think that might be the problem with an educational centre as well. I know that's another thing, we'll forget about it for the moment, but if you're gonna have loads of children down there, you'd have to make sure the foundations were safe. Um, so uh, on this occasion, I'm gonna uh, just listen to what the, Lord, the ward councillor says. I know she's um, very concerned with ecology, She's a member of the trust and um, she's saying it's not really on. So I'm just going to follow her lead on this one. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wilding. Uh, Councillor Selden, did you want to come in? Uh, no, thank you, Chairman. My, my questions have been answered. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor James, then, please. Thank you, Chairman. I just wonder what on earth Herefordshire Trust Nature Trusts are doing here. We have what is a commercial um, development. Uh, I've got um, a Herefordshire Nature Trust property within my ward, and it was um, purchased with a lot of support from a, quite a number of people. Um, it's now been developed, so it doesn't look like anything like a farm. Uh, it has very little limited access for, for, for the public or even members of the, uh, of the trust. You know, this, this, you have a, a proposal here which is going to cost an enormous amount of money. The nature of that type of building, and I've got a few, I hope, in a better condition, but, you know, the same t type of stone walls, you know, they'll have to be all underpinned, you know, and you're going to put what is a modern tourist luxury building in the head of it, uh, by the Herefordshire Nature Trust. They're gonna to have to raise enormous amount of money in order to do this. And what are they gonna end up with? You know, this is the whole reason of the, uh, the trust and the support they get is to 
to develop it and to try and conserve and, and enhance natural in the natural environment. This is the complete opposite. I think the members of the Herefshire National Nature Trust need to have a look at what they're doing. It seems to be it's more about jobs for the boys and, and you know, justifying the, 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 the trust in itself and its employees. I certainly won't support this proposal. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor James. I've got no further speakers registered to uh, speak. So I'm going to move across to um, oh, Councillor Milne has just uh, indicated he'd like a, a second. Uh, a second bite of the show, very, very yeah, briefly. Um, I, I was just going to ask, uh, the um, heritage statement uh, promises that um, if the application is granted consent that um, <coughs> that, uh, that the Wildlife Trust would would use uh, materials from within its own estate, um, stone and timber. And we noticed at the site meeting on Monday that its quarry is right next to it. So I just wonder whether if, 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 if um, members were minded to con grant consent and a, a condition could be added. I know there is a very long list of conditions already which um, enshrines that commitment to in the interests of, of not bringing in unsuitable materials from long distances, we use, use the materials on site as much as possible, certainly the stone anyway. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Milne. Um, I'm sure if, um, if there is a, a move towards approval of this application, such a condition could be included. Uh, but currently we got on the table a motion to refuse. So uh, I'm gonna go across to Mr. Bishop uh, to make any comments, if he wishes, before we go back to uh, Councillor Swinglehurst, the ward member. Thank you, Chairman. Um, having seen the building myself for the first time today, uh, with the uh, with the pictures, etc., and uh, drawings, I must say it's uh, it's it's uh, it's typical of a of, of a lot of buildings that officers have to deal with, or have had, uh, and I've dealt with many years. Um, particularly to the west of the county, where we've seen lots of small small scale buildings such as this, um, which have been uh, very carefully converted uh, or uh, uh, sensitively converted. I must say that the design, I think, is, is very good. They, they really uh, looked at the building they have there. Um, it's, it's, I would suggest it's a, it's a very acceptable, well-designed conversion. Uh, the use of the uh, glazing link helps bring the two, the two together, but but, keep, but keeps them separate, um, and uh, and that's again, it's it, it, well designed in that respect. Um, it's for, I would say, it's for a mo it's for a modest holiday use. It's limited to um, eight persons, and there's a condition attached to that, and that's that that is 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 enforceable. Um, there are a, a number of uh, of conditions attached to the to the proposal, but I would suggest, Chairman, if we, if we did go along the lines of of an uh, of a an approval, we, we would have a further condition and that would be re, re relating to a requirement relating to refuse collection and to see what 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 method could be uh, imposed for that. It may well be that uh, they will they, they will seek for the uh, the occupants to take their rubbish away with them um, and um, recycle um, and or the the fact that they will have cleaners in to clean it to, to do that anyway so i think that could be an added condition we are that is added on to it um the drainage uh, forms part of this proposal but you heard the, that they've got a, a subsequent uh, consideration in but you have the drainage aspects which in principle have been agreed by your drainage your drainage consultant it's well related to land grove um it's you know it, it, invariably we get applications for holiday accommodations which are in the middle of the countryside uh, in, in, in this particular case, we have one which is adjacent, you, virtually adjacent to the the village itself, uh, and in that respect, it's it's it it is it is well related. Services uh, it, 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 it it will support the local economy, um, whether that's with um, uh, goods they bring bring with it, buy in local shops, use use of the local um, local pub, etc. Those are all facilities which. Uh, will they um, occupants will bring into it and uh, not necessarily from Wales uh, because we do have occupants who come into it from England from from the English shires as well coming into the county so um, I'm sure we will get a lot of English 
uh, uh, in there as well. But it is, I must say, it is a well, it is a well designed proposal. There are a, a number of controlling conditions attached to it, and I can only commend the application to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. As we're fully aware, we've got a ta uh, motion table for refusal of this application, contrary to officer recommendation. Um, before we actually go to the vote, I will obviously go to uh, Councillor Swinglehurst to uh, sum up that uh, the uh, members, Councillor Bowen and Councillor Wilding, will need to have reasons um, before we go to the vote. So, um, Councillor Swinglehurst first, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. So, the, uh, uh, th there is a balance here about the uh, whether or not this, this, this application um, is compliant with RA five. Is the, the, the the magnitude of the of the of the building works that would be required set against the economic benefit? Um, I, I wasn't being facetious, and, and or I wasn't even suggesting that the only Welsh people would be staying there. But the, most people who live in Langrove shop in Monmouth. Um, so that's you know the, the, that that would be likely to be the pattern of behaviour. Um, so the what what economic uplift there might be would at the very least be shared with um, our Welsh neighbours. Um, but in terms of the local uh, economy, you know, there's a milk shed and there's a pub um, and that's it. So uh, it, it would be limited. And so therefore it cannot weigh that massively uh, in the scale against the uh, the, the, the amount of rebuilding uh, that would be necessary to get the structure capable of conversion. And that's the balance that, that is before you. Um, Mr. Bishop has, 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 uh, has touched on the design and the, you know, yes, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's fine, but the introduction of that amount of glazing will inevitably be the introduction of that amount of light spillage of an evening. Uh, into what is a very dark and tranquil place. And that has to be considered. Um, I, I was thinking, how, how would it work if somebody had an electric vehicle? Somebody's got an EV, they parked up at the top of the hill. How are they going to charge it? How's that going to work? It's a mystery. Or they're going to come in not electric vehicles, in which case you've got a lot of vehicles because there ain't no bus. Well, there's a bus once a week. Um, and, and that is not what we're trying to achieve here, is it really? Uh, to have, you know, five or six cars unsustainably because you can't use an electric vehicle uh, turning up into the, into the countryside. Um, so therefore, I, 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 and I also want to touch on, on council and thank you very much for what is a fascinating contribution always is. I always like to, to listen to, to his points. And also council Milmal raising the issue of emergency access. Uh, the planning officer says, well, there's another, uh, dwelling further down. Well, yes, but that dwelling has the benefit of the full width of the access because the access at the point slightly above the uh, where the barns are uh, is does not is not shared. So they they're able to because it's their access. So they they have the full width of the access all the way to their house plus a large turning area. And I can't remember who who said, but there would be an issue with emergency vehicles could get down there. Maybe perhaps sort of a bit close, proximal, but but they wouldn't be able to turn around when they got there. Um, so for, for, for these reasons, um, you know, again, I, I would persist with um, RA5, uh, MT1 and LD2, subsection C, um, and I thank members very much for, for their, their consideration of this, uh, this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Swinglehurst. Um, I'd now like to uh, go back to uh, Councillor Bowen and Councillor Wilding then that uh, proposed and seconded refusal of this application and give their reasons, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thank I'll you. go first. Sorry, are you Sorry. going, um, Councillor well, Wilding? You, uh, no, you go first. Right, thank you very much. That's very good of you. Uh, yes, I think there are many things against this. Um, it goes against what should be the ethos of the Heritage Wildlife Trust, I think, in the first place. And that is rather sad to have to say that. Uh, there's minimal economic benefit. Uh, it may be well designed, but there's the problems of light spillage and all the rest of it and possible noise. Uh, it is a dark and tranquil valley. Let us keep it that way. And 
there are, could be other more appropriate uses. I know they're not in, under our consideration, but we should think about what is going to be the best use of these buildings. And I do agree that the stone, the stone barn is actually a very interesting building. The barn or the buyer above it, I think, is of very limited value indeed. And it will need a lot of work on it to make it anything worthwhile at all. And um, the access is undoubtedly a real problem. And uh, one of our more senior members uh, didn't make it down there at all. And I could fully understand that. And if you had very small children as well, that might be also quite tough getting up and down, let alone carrying all your supplies up and down. You will not be getting much in the way of uh, vehicles down a very, very limited and narrow, narrow track to that, that particular site, which is unfortunate. So I think RA5, MT1, LD2, LD2, bracket C are all very relevant to this. Besides which, let us try and be realistic about this. Uh, we all perhaps are keen on making sure we get the very best developments and <sighs> improvements to our economy in Herefordshire and tourism is very, very important. But I do not think that this is an appropriate use of these particular buildings in this particular state. And can we please encourage the Wildlife Trust perhaps to use it in, in a better, more wildlife um, beneficial way and refuse this and make them think again, please. For okay. More okay. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. It wasn't the opportunity for another speech. It was <laughs> re reasons for the refusal. So uh, Councillor Wilding, please. Um, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I won't make a speech, but I'll draw the uh, committee's attention to LD2 section C, uh, development that would be liable to harm the nature conservation value of a site or species of local nature conservation interest will only be permitted if the um, importance of the development outweighs the local value of the site. So that's the question that LD2 stroke C comes to. Um, does the development outweigh the importance of the site? So the site is very important. We know that because um, the, the, the trust have, uh, you know, gone for it. And their sole purpose, I would say, is to make that site um, habitable for um, ecology, not for humans. So if this uh, building was going to be used again, it would be brilliant for owls and other things to take. Yeah, you're going into a speech again. OK, thanks. Anyway, LD2 stroke C. Thanks. OK, thank you. Chair, may I just address one point, if I, if I may, just before, um, obviously, you decide to move to the vote. Um, Councillor Roan, initially at the beginning, and subsequently Councillor Bowen have, have, have raised the ethos of the Herefordshire Wildlife Trust, and obviously, you know, the purposes for that, that land being given to Herefordshire Wildlife Trust. Just to, to remind members that that's not a material planning consideration. You just concentrate on the policies that have been put forward by the, by the proposer and the seconder. Um, and if you could work on those ones when you when you when you decide which way you're going to vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a good point made, uh, Mrs. Evans. Um, so, are members clear on um, the uh, motion of refusal uh, that has been made? And Chair, Chair, Mr Bishop to... would like to speak. OK, Mr Bishop. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the reasons put forward, I, I do have concerns. Um, MT1 has been put forward. You have your professional highways team who have uh, assessed the proposal and, and are content that access to the to the site is acceptable. We, we, we would have difficulty def defending the application, uh, an, an appeal on that basis. Uh, I do have concerns with Aldi 2C as well, Chairman. When you have an ecology report which has been submitted with the application, um, and forms a, a condition number fifteen attached to your to your to your uh, to the recommended conditions. Um, so I do have concerns on that, those reasons put forward. Okay. So um, if I could uh, be reminded, then what condition, uh, what um, policies that uh, the proposer and second are, are actually putting forward then? that um, are eligible to be counted. 
Gem and I would recommend RA5 um, that the nature and structure of the building is such that uh, it wouldn't be converted. It would be tantamount to a, to a new build. That would be the area that you would go to. However, I would say, having seen the pictures myself and looked, you've got structural engineers reports within it and the building control officer as well has commented that would be uh, that would be a difficult area to to defend. But that would be the area which is most appropriate for you to consider. Right. Councillor Bowen, Councillor Wilding, um, do you take that professional advice, please? Uh, yes, to a certain extent, I think we do. Obviously, one has to listen to one's. Uh, senior professionals very carefully. And I always give Mr. Bishop uh, full benefit of everything he says. Um, every word is precious. Uh, RA5, I think, is actually very important. And certainly uh, the other other uh, surveyor's report is, is very relevant to this, I think. And we should take that into consideration. And it's a very, very important statement, I think. Um, the other ones, I think, do have some weight, actually because the access is very, very tricky. It is not just an easy little one. Um, the way down is very steep, very narrow indeed, and it should be, I think, a material consideration in this particular basis. Uh, the little lanes coming up to the village, of course, are narrow as well, but it's the immediate uh, basis of getting into the site is, is very tricky, I, I, I do believe, and. Okay, I think that point's been made. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, right, I'm going to go to the vote. Um, I'd like to remind members of the committee that they can only vote on the application before the committee if they've been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. Um, Chair. Uh, yes. My apologies uh, for just for clarification. Then we're looking reasons for refusals. Ra five, and is Councillor Boeing still saying that he wants to rely upon MT one? Can you confirm that, Councillor Boeing? Uh, yes, thank you. Ra five, MT one, and they are not considering LD two subsection C. Is that correct? Ah, uh, I. Sorry, I, I think still um, LD2 um, subsection C does have some relevance. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think, think Councillor Wilding wanted to come back in on, on that one as well. Yeah, I still think LD2 does have relevance. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Chair. Thank you. Um, does anybody need to um, uh, advise me that they're not permitted to vote? I think we did lose Councillor Wilding just for a very short period of time. Um, I think you went off screen. Are you comfortable that you're in a position to vote? Yes, I, ju I, I got all the presentations. I missed about 20 seconds or so of, um, um, I'm not sure which one of the councillors it was saying something, but I believe I, I got plenty of the debate. Okay, uh, can, uh, Mrs Evans, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, it was during Councillor Roan's um, three minutes, and, I, and Councillor James disappeared off. Uh, his screen went black. If you can just clarify, please. You're muted, Councillor James. Yeah, I, I heard the whole of the debate. I only went off to take a drink okay. whilst listening to the debate. <laughs> Fine, thanks. I didn't, think, I didn't think people wanted to view me drinking. No. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Non alcoholic. Oh, very, cons very considerate, <laughs> Councillor James. Um, right, can I ask Democratic Services whether the electronic voting system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible members uh, able to vote on this application? Yes, Chair, we've got 13 voting members on this one. Thank you. And they may vote now. Right. Um, this is for the buildings at Tridordi Nature Reserve. Um, the proposal is refusal of this application, um, contrary to officers' recommendations. You either vote for refusal against or abstain. And if you could uh, all um, vote no, please. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. Uh, 10 in favour, 4 refusal, 2 against and 1 abstention. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, that uh, proposal to refuse is one then, uh, so the application is refused. Um, and thankfully, I didn't have, the, have to have the casting vote on that one. Um, right, that concludes the business for today's meeting. Um, the date of the next meeting is uh, Wednesday, the 13th of January, uh, with site visits probably the day before. So um, I'd like to thank you all very much for your input and uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas and um, actually request that the uh, recording is now uh, stopped, please. <laughs>